So this, uh, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting um, and Sewer Commissioners meeting for the um, April 12th, 2023. The time is 5.33 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting in uh, on Zoom and municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Uh, please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room in at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. You can go to the Town of Deerfield's website and uh, find the link for we're joining a meeting with the Finance Committee, which will open right after. And um, the links are the same. The the IDs are the same. The toll-free number, if you'd like to call in, is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 57002. I'll call the meeting to order and hand it over to finance. All right, so I will call the finance committee meeting to order at 534 p.m. for April 12, 2023. Um, I think the first item would be the minutes from the previous meeting. Um, I move to accept the minutes of the um, previous meeting um, with one small typographical connection correction of the account number for police uh, salaries. Police expense. Police expense. Yeah. Sorry, which I just minor. Duplicated the salary. Not have time to get out of the edited version. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? No, all those, um, there's nobody on the finance committee remote, so we can just vote. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, that's unanimous 400. All right, so next item, um, Candace has joined us online. Um, Welcome, Candace. So um, we were discussing the benefits associated with various positions a couple weeks ago and um, wanted to look back at the um, library budget. The library budget includes one position that the um, position was 19 hours. They added two hours to the position to make it 21 which makes it a benefited position. Um, so I can share this. Um, so if you look at the total salary for the person in that position, um, we went through and figured what the benefits could be. So this is a potential liability. Um, for benefits. So looking at this salary, um, it's one, this is kind of minor, but here's the Medicare impact. The health care impact depends on what benefits the person chooses sure. to select. Um, this value is Help me, Brenda. HMO or PPO? It's, HMO. it's based on the highest plan somebody could choose for HMO, just, just to be safe and in or conservative, I guess I should say, in our calculation. So this would be like a family plan mm -hmm. at at the high, the most expensive of the choices that are in there. Okay. Um the retirement. This year um, was 23.66%. And this is of the average of five years worth of salary okay. that ended, what, the final year is 21 or 22? 21. 21, right? 
So this we would not see this year. This would gradually increase to this value over the upcoming five years as, as that came in. Um, the OPEB right now for OPEB, um, we are paying 4% of last year's health care. So 4% of this 14,000, um, I think should be the right answer. Yes. Yeah. Um, is that value. So the total benefit package for this would be 22,000. Now we don't see this in this year's budget, mm -hmm. right? The person doesn't have health care. They, they, the, the retirement doesn't kick in. So this uh, other than the Medicare piece and the right. OPEC, and yeah. Um, so the $389 would show up, but regardless, so this is not going to show up in this year's budget. Um, so the, um, the actual increase this year would be essentially $4,000 because that's what the extra two hours over mm -hmm. 52 weeks comes to at the salary, you know, at the, the pay rate that this person gets. That's just um, the pay? That's too high for just the pay, isn't it? Two, two hours is, uh, 50, is 104 hours. So we, is $40 an hour this person makes? 2374. So 2374 times 104 hours is right. Okay. I'm just saying if that's if that is just reflecting salary, then it's gotta be high. 2317. It's 169 hours additional. Oh, I thought it was two hours a week. How did I get 169? Oh, because I looked at last year's and it was 962 hours last year and 1131 hours this year. It, Candace, is it just two hours is that, that yes. we would be increasing? Yeah. So one of these two numbers must be wrong. Um, let me, <laughs> do you have the budget in front of you? I don't have that right in front of me. Uh, I do, and it says eleven thirty-one. Whether that's for the current, is that so? That's for... the proposed for proposed the year. Yeah. And then so that's, I right, looked that's at what, what's the what's the budget number? Six ten dash fifty four hundred. Uh, yeah, I'd have to grab my last year's book to know what we budgeted last year for. Last year, head adult service was at 962. At least in the, in the sheet I have here, 6101. Somebody, didn't somebody leave? Wasn't there something in the narrative about eight hours being spread out over? So maybe this was oh, picked up some hours okay. during the year. Um, so if we want to make it what 5,204 hours instead, I think so. All right. So that's $2,400, 2468. So this budget as proposed has already been approved and voted by finance committee. Mm -hmm. So in order to reopen it um i think we need a, a motion to reconsider this budget before that does anybody want to reopen this budget um maybe for the benefit of i mean have, have you talked with candace uh, about the it's the mismatch between the slight increase in hours and the enormous increase in benefits that result from it. Well, have you, have you, have, yeah. she might need a bit more discussion about that. I did do some calculations um, based on the numbers that I got, that you just went over um, as far as percentages and, and costs. I don't know if you, I, I sent that to you all earlier. Oh, I don't know if this is the time to bring to pull that up. Didn't um, didn't Julie just go over these numbers that you're looking talking about, Jane? Yeah, I did, a, I did a percentage based on yeah. the total town amount of the benefits and the this position as according to the numbers that were just shared um, of being twenty two thousand 
$65 would be 1.2% of the total town benefits appropriation, um, according to last year's, this current year's numbers. And then for this current employee um, will, would not take the health benefits because um, she doesn't need the health benefits because of her family. So that would decrease by $14,734, where the total cost would be 7,331. And the percentage of the total town cost projected would be 0.4%. Um, so those, those are just some numbers that I put together to show percentage. Right, but I, I think what the issue here is, is that while the current adult services director might not be taking health insurance this year, we have no way of knowing if that can change. And by making it a benefited position, that means that any replacement would, you know, the town would suddenly be hit with an additional basically 20 some, you know, all of those benefits would kick in. So I think what, right. what we were wondering is, would it be possible to knock the hours back down to below where the benefit threshold would kick in? Is that what? I mean, the, the reason why I'm, I'm presenting this budget um, is because we need this position to be more, um, this person to be more available because of the, um, all of the listed fact reasons that I, I put in the, what I sent to you um, earlier today and what I talked about at the last week's, last time we met. Yeah. Um, and in going back to the percentage, even if, it's, if the employee takes the health benefits, it's only a little over 1% of the entire town's benefit amount. Um, I don't think the percent of the town's total benefit amount is particularly pertinent to the discussion. Um, I, I, I just think it's, it's, I think it's good information to, to be aware of, that's all. Because I, I, I wasn't aware. And so I thought it was interesting information to, to share. So what percent is the person's salary of the total town salary um, amount? Uh, I would say if they're at 26, they're at about one, probably like one point, oh, about the town, I, I don't know, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'll imagine it's pretty, pretty low. <laughs> I imagine too. I, I yeah. didn't get an email from you earlier, so maybe you can resend I, it. I didn't something. either. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I can share it now if you want me to. Um, let, let's hang on. Go ahead, Dave. You had a question. Yeah, let me just try to yeah. re reframe this discussion 0. a little <laughs> bit. Um, it, it, it seems like we're having a discussion that, that would apply to any um, you know, part-time position in town that we're trying to, you know, that somebody might turn into a plus 20 hour position. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I guess the, the question is, um, if we are not um, picking apart the rationale for this position, in other words, you know, we have a department head who's brought to us a budget for various reasons, uh, we, we approved it once, we all know that this is a tiny piece of the town's pie, that the budget for the library is increasing probably less than most departments, if you look at, if you look at it, it's like a three and a half percent uh, increase. Mm -hmm. so, so if we're not gonna criticize the library's um, you know, rationale and position, then we're having a much more philosophical debate about, you know, are we gonna be, employers who are going to try to keep all of our employees, not all of them, I get that we're not doing all of them, but are we going to be the employer that's trying to keep people below 20 hours so we don't have to pay them benefits? I think that that is likely to, um, is not a policy that we would support in general. Um, you know, I'm- No, I, I don't. Okay. I, I agree with you and I, I'm not suggesting that. The reason we're discussing it again now is that when we voted it, we didn't have the full impact of the budget in front of us. So since then, we've sure. gone through and done that calculation and seen that number. Right. Um, I, I, but that number, I don't mean to interrupt you, but again, just from your analysis earlier, mm -hmm. the impact of this on next year is negligible. So right. we're all talking about the potential yes. of this person leaving the job 
and somebody else taking the job who's going to cost us more money. And all no, I'm saying no. is just from a but planning purpose, I'm just not sure that that's a, 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 a valid approach to this problem or discussion. In so other words, I don't, so one thing we've done, I'm going to talk about something else for okay. a minute, and then, yeah. and then, but it, yeah. it's pertinent, okay. um, is that one thing we've done is we've reached out to the DLS provides a forecasting, will help us develop a forecasting tool. And the forecasting tool gives us a five-year outlook of our budget. And it enables us to look at a five-year impact of the decisions that we make in our budget. And I would love yeah. to have that ability. I think that that would be very useful mm -hmm. when we have these discussions. Um, so I think that not considering, I, I think we're very clear that next year in FY24, there, the impact's going to be 2000 and whatever we came right. up with. $43 or whatever it was. I don't remember the number. Um, and that is a very small amount. The What we need to recognize when we agree and vote for this and support this is that there's potentially a much larger impact on the budget, right? We need to not be blind to it. We need to not say, I, I mean, it goes both ways. We need to not say that the budget next year is going to be an extra $30,000 because it's not. Right. right. And it's likely that it won't be $30,000 for several years because it's likely, hopefully, that this person will stay in the position and they won't need health care and will plug along just fine. But we also need to not approve it without recognizing that the potential is there for that budget increase. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But I guess I'm just saying that goes for every position and decision we make. And I don't think it that does. that's an appropriate decision to make when we're talking about personnel and hiring to say we want people who are going to, we're not going to get benefits. No, no, to. no, but the argument needs to be that, that one, this position requires as many hours and two, that there can be arguments along the lines of we can't fill this position unless it's a benefited position, or we can't fill, you know, there are other people in other towns are making more money or whatever. Those are all very viable arguments. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have that discussion and whoever's hiring the person, I guess the, the library in this instance has that discussion, goes through that rationale and recognizes the impact. But we also need to not, I think finance committee needs to think about the full implications of the, the changes that are being yeah. recommended. Yeah, I don't um, disagree with that at all. That we should be looking at all that that kind of stuff. That's for sure. Um, but again, just philosophically, I don't know that this particular hill is one to sort of die on for that cause. Because I think it's, I think we should be talking about the overall budget. But I think this is setting a bad example, just from a personnel viewpoint to be uh or nixing something because so, of a potential potential liability that we clearly do not have so we're talking about a two thousand dollar impact on next year's budget yes well, obviously as budgets grow which unfortunately they're going, we know to. They're going to we're going to have tough decisions we may have to make cuts you know at various places but i'm just saying to make this cut when we know that the impact right now is low and could be low for the foreseeable future. And people go on and off benefits all the time. I'm sure if you looked at the all of the people who are 20 hour IAs in the school, for instance, there's some who are on, there's some who aren't. And then, no, school, we're not making those decisions about who we're I would hiring. be very surprised is if once you made this a full-time benefited position, if it ever went back. Well, I would agree, but don't forget, the other thing we're doing here is we, this town is committed, all of us here, I think, um, and a lot of people in this town are committed to investing a huge amount of money in this library. Right. Right. Huge. Yes. So the idea that we're going to say we're going to invest this money in this library and then we're going to we're going to we're going to nickel and dime and, and cut um, the budget seems to me just to be an extraordinary thing, again, in the context of the overall issues and budget and where the real drivers are ex of expense are for the town. 
So I'll, I'll let someone else Jim, speak. Go ahead. You, and Mark has his hand up. That, uh, I, I'm going to directly contradict that because because the town has committed to an enormous capital project on behalf of the library, I think it's, I think we're almost, you know, sort of have to fulfill a promise to the town to control, you know, to show that we're doing our best to control expenses. I agree, but you're, again, in the, in the, in the overall scheme of the costs, and I guess where I was going with the library, is we're gonna have this beautiful library. We shouldn't shortchange the right. staffing and and the support and the use of it and the right. hours that it's open or whatever right. um, for this unknown savings that we don't even know if we're gonna end up having to pay for it or not because we're all admitting this person's not taking the benefits. But oh, right, just, just as a as a side note, when we make this a benefited position, there are just three library positions that would be benefited and not benefited, and all the rest of them are under 20 hours. And and that's you know several employees that are still under 20. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's several that are yeah. Mark, do you have a comment? Yeah. So um, you know, at this point, like I I know that the 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 total increase potential wouldn't be realized for a couple of years, but this year, we're robbing all of our stabilization funds and don't really have any way of funding capital projects any anytime soon in the next couple of years. And on top of all that, we are looking to increase two hours for the library at a total increase of $26,077 potentially. Um, I think that increasing just two hours, which, and I'm not even sure that this is going to add to the, the library's total number of hours. Candace, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the library is going to be open 30 hours a week, yeah. right? Regardless of whether or not we add these two hours. Yes. So we're not increasing service by adding these two um, from, you know, the, the perspective of how many hours it's open. I'm, I'm sure that person will add value for the two hours that they're there, but it's going to cost a lot of money to add those two hours uh, in total benefit increases. And we're, we're, we're talking about doing this at a time where, like I said, we're robbing all of our funds. We, we beat up skims to the tune of 10,000. Um, the last time we met, um, we're, we're kind of like looking under the couch cushions all over the place for extra money. And I know that we're, we're talking about percentage increases as indicators where it's like, you know, overall, it's not a big increase, but the, the dollar amounts do matter, you know, 20, 22,065 or 26,000 or whatever we're talking about, that actually does have a big impact uh, for us. And, um, you know, I certainly appreciate that the person may not be taking benefits right now, but the funny thing about change of life increases in health insurance, you know, for people who have a change of life, um, you know, event is most of them are unplanned. You know, a spouse or someone could lose insurance, or you could find out that you, you know, have a dependent on, you know, that you have to take care of. So at a moment's notice, that $14,734 that we're not expecting to incur, you know, overnight could change. So normally, you know, I, I would say that it probably does make sense. And, you know, to your to your point, David, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to be the kind of town that, you know, wants to, you know, um, try and, and, and keep people out of benefited positions for, um, you know, like a, as an overall strategy, but it's only a two hour increase. You know, if I, if, if I were running a, a business, I, I, I think that I would want to consider giving those two hours to another employee um, before I would sign up for a large increase like that. Now, if we needed another 10 hours out of this person, then I, I could, you know, probably get on board, but for a two hour increase, when we're not changing the number of hours that they're open, I, I think it's too much of a liability for us for, for this upcoming year. But, well, hold on, the potential liability, you mean? Or well, I mean, it's yeah. It's $2,000 for next year. No, that's not. Oh. And it really is the two hours for one of the most valuable positions that, that does need to expand like the children's library librarian position did, you know, uh, in the last decade, um, you know, that, that position the responsibilities and the, you know, what, how they, how they serve the community is growing um, exponentially. So in the two hours is what I offer because of what I know the town would, 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 um, would approve. I would give her, I would definitely give this position 10 more hours if you said that you would do that. 
um, I just <clears throat> was trying to keep, you know, my percentage of increase of my budget outside of the benefits below a certain percentage. Um, so if you're, if you feel like you could work it out to give more to this position, we would definitely take it. Two hours is the minimum. Um, and also the same person, their benefits come from their spouse that has federal benefits that would are for life. Um, so there wouldn't be an, an instant um, situ a situation where they would instantly lose those benefits. Yeah, I guess the only other thing I would say about that is, you know, it's, I, I know that, that, you know, this isn't going to be a, a, the person that's not going to be, you know, doing something that has merit, you know, we're, we're looking at um, other, other budgets as well. Like I said, you know, last time we met, we, we, we talked very critically about the SCEMS budget and, you know, that's a very essential service. I mean, we, we're, we're in a, a financial spot right now where we, we have to, you know, look at these things critically and, you know, it, like I said, uh, you know, just having a, a potential liability like that for for a two hour increase doesn't um, doesn't make sense to me. Beth, why don't you go ahead? Um, I just have a question. So how say, so say this person works for five years and and we've made, we've decided to make it a full time position, um, and then they decide to leave and um you're going to hire a new person how is the new job refilled like who makes the like is the new job definitely a full-time position again to refill or how is that decided the second time around um well obviously that would be assessed by by the director and the trustees about what the current needs are but um so it would probably match whatever the current needs are um so if that person if we're you know operating with that person working so many hours and we need those hours to to stay to stay to that uh, level, then that's what we would, um, you know, advertise the job being. Unless we felt like there was uh, room in the budget, or we'd be able to get an increase if we needed it by you know a small amount. But most likely, it would just remain. And as far as the salary level, that would be that would also depend on the person's education and work experience. So I guess what I'm saying is it wouldn't change that much, uh, if at all. Um, Candace, for the um, period when the library is going to be under construction and y'all are moving into some other as yet undisclosed location, unknown location, not undisclosed, um, do you plan, what's your, what's your personnel plan for that? Like, is everybody going to continue to work all the hours that they would um, if yes. your library building stayed the same or? Yes. Yeah. Because there's, you know, wherever we, wherever we are, we'll still be functioning, fully functioning as a library. It's just that we might shift instead of doing, you know, like the children's librarian might not be doing programs inside the building. They'll be doing them elsewhere or doing them online or, you know, we're, you know, I, I don't want to take away, that feels punitive to take away staff hours um, for a year to, you know, while we're waiting for the building to be un go under construction. So, you know, we'll have plenty of, of things to do. And depending on the size of the space that we are in, we might be able to do everything that we are doing now as far as, um, I don't think the jobs will change much. It's just like how the number of, the number of um, people that will be serving on a daily basis in person. Okay. Trevor, you had a question? Uh, I just, I guess just more of a statement that um, I've, uh, recognizing that it, it is the head of adult services position and it's the kind of the main person adults use when they come in. Um, you know, I know there was talk that we wouldn't be adding, you know, doing this addition and doing a bigger library, we wouldn't be adding staff, but I, I, I feel like it's kind of naive to think that when you're going to have that much um, opportunity to do all kinds of things for, for people. Um, I, I'm in support of doing it. I, I think on David's point, I really wouldn't look at the benefits. I know it's important for this board to do that and the town to recognize that, but um, I'm not sure it's, like I said, I, I don't know. I just don't think it's worth thinking about the benefits of, of somebody may or may not take. Uh, um, I do recognize that it adds cost to the town and we're struggling in a, in a lot of ways. Um, but I think such a vital position for the for the library, you know, makes sense to to support it. But 
I could support a bunch of others, but <laughs> it's um, hard. Just a, so a couple of things. One, I just want to say that um, regarding the SCAMS budget, um, we certainly didn't um, take anything, cut anything away from the services that they provide whatsoever. We just recognize that they may have some issues around their overtime account that they can do without. So I just want to make that clear that we didn't go after them and tell them how to run uh, run their run their shop. Um, the other thing is, um, I'm just curious, Brenda, whether you have any idea what percentage of town employees um, take health benefits. And I'm not I, I'm not holding you to a precise answer because obviously, but I'm just curious. I mean, is it 90 percent? Is it 50 percent? I mean, do the people who have spouses at UMass and Deerfield uh, employment do they choose the UMass one or do they choose the Deerfield? It's interesting. Um, certain departments are more likely to take insurance than others, sure. like okay. EMS has a tendency to take insurance. Um, but I think overall, really, I think it's probably closer to 50, maybe 60% at the okay. most. I, so, I can't tell you for sure. Sure. So, so perfect answer. Okay. So just where I wanted to go with it. Um, so back to the point about life events, right? We have a whole bunch of town employees, maybe half of them, maybe 40% of them. Um, who are currently not on benefits, but a life event may happen, and they're going to get benefits, and it's going to cost us money, and we're going to do it, and we're not going to bat an eyelid, because that's what we do for our employees. Mm -hmm. And you don't so, want to be in a position where you're discouraging an employee from taking benefits. If the that, benefits are right. there, then they should be absolutely totally open to take them. Right, absolutely. And, and that's sort of an impact on, you know, a budget that we don't know about, but it's, but it's there. Um, and then, Candace, I guess I'm going to put you on the spot for a second here, because um, this issue has come up in past hearings um, a little bit. Um, maybe you were present, maybe you weren't. But in terms of this just sort of very rational idea of, hey, you're adding some hours at the library. Why aren't you adding hours that the library is open or accessible to people? And I'm just wondering about if if that's an important issue for certain people here, whether that's something you looked at or considered or, or thought about, um, you know, in terms of the staffing needs and how many you need to keep a library open. Yeah, I mean, the staffing needs right now serve, you know, the hours that we have open. If, we, if we're going to um, open more hours, we need to increase the staff for quite a few of the staff, at least, at least um, two, if not three. And so, and we have upstairs and downstairs, so that would be two hours for each hour that we're open to staff hours. So if we want to go up to 32 hours um, uh, or maybe th 33 uh, as, a, as a, an example to open on a Friday from like 10 to one, um, then that would be, we'd have to pay the staff for those hours. Um, so that would be additional, um, you know, electricity in the building and then staff being paid to, uh, to be there. But philosophically, how, how few staff do you need to open the building? Two. Two. And yeah. is, is that just a management decision or a common sense Same decision? Thing. Or what's to say that you don't? We have two stories. So there's no way we could have one person at the library with two stories. Um, you know, if you're downstairs, you can't serve people, adults, you know, in the, in the children's room, you can't serve adults um, no, upstairs. I and vice versa. So you don't believe that people can, uh, somebody can come in and go into the children's place if there's only if there's only a library and upstairs. Um, you know, once if someone leaves early, um, yes. But um, and also it's a it's a safety issue if someone's alone in the building and something happens and you're in a larger building with two floors and there's no one there to back yep. you up. You know that can be a safety a safety issue. If it was one floor, and I've worked as a librarian on in one floor, one story libraries, as the only staff person, and even that's starting to change. That trend is starting to go away um, for safety issues to not have someone alone. But in a two story building, um, it's even more challenging. Yeah. And then I guess I want to ask that sort of question to everybody here, and I don't. It's sort of um, I'm not sure if it's a legal question or or how the town is run question. But, and, and I'm not saying that you would do this, Candace, but again, it gets to this idea of who's managing what here. So if, if, um, if, if this finance committee says, well, we don't wanna support this extra $2,000, well, 
what's to say that Candace just rearranges her budget and takes $2,000 from somewhere else in her budget and pays this particular employee for that time? I can't do that. Um, I've, I've attempted to do that because we have state aid money and it's about the, the full amount that the, the full hours that the employee is working. It doesn't matter if it comes from another source because I had a long email thread with uh, Sarah Kimball about this about six months ago when I was attempting to do that. And um, and we went back and forth and um, and it was very strongly decided by Sarah that that is not a thing that can happen, that, that the employee still works, you know, the, the hours that they work and doesn't matter if it's being coming from um, different sources. He's, he's, I, I'm not Candace, sure. he's suggesting yeah. that not, not that because you're right. Uh, if the person works 22 hours, then they're benefited. Um, no matter where the money's coming from, but he's talking about paying that person for 22 hours anyway, and then reducing what you pay for books. I know you can't do that. Or oh. what you pay for something else that might be a little more uh, programs. Yeah, I mean, those are all those are all kind of set. Um, you know, the MBLC, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners requires a certain percentage of the total budget go towards what's called materials, which means books, DVDs, so on and so forth. And so we're, we're right at that, um, you know, that that number. And then um, the programs are funded by the friends. They offset the budget with, um, you know, an annual amount that they give to us. Right. So really, there really isn't room in the budget um, to wiggle room in the budget. It's pretty, it's a pretty tight budget. But even the salaries, like, could could the decision be made to reduce a part time person and increase a full time person? Um, I mean, I could increase the children's hours, but that's not going to help what we need upstairs, and, and you know, with the adult serving the adults. <laughs> She's totally not getting. The you're not. You're not so getting. He, the here's the question, right? <laughs> so say We're say finance that. committee says that this budget um, isn't. No. What's the dollar? Two hundred and ten thousand is two hundred and eight thousand. Mm -hmm. And then you look at that and say, well, if I have two hundred and eight thousand, I'm just making this up. I'm going to take the library assistant number fourteen, and I'm going to reduce them by four hours because they only get paid half as much. And I'm going to increase this other person by two hours. And now the head of adult services is twenty one hours and benefited. Right, you could do that within the purview of your budget. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so ask the rest of your question. <laughs> now that we're on the same page. Well, so but this so this is why it's sort of a philosophical question, and I'm sorry to on this beautiful evening to go in this direction, and we certainly don't need to end the discussion here. But my my point is just, you know. <laughs> You know, oh, how sense. much meddling, or meddling is, sorry, that's a loaded word, how, how much, you know, input, input like, into how our department heads run their departments does the finance committee have? I could imagine the select board as the sort of employer and really directing the town can say, you know what, no, or yes, so we're going to deal with this position, but we're just looking at a budget and sort of making recommendations on it. So I'm, where I'm going with this is, well, you know exactly where I'm going is, I'm, you know, we <laughs> in our position to tell Candace, sorry, the library organization that, that you can't have these uh, two hours because we think in the future that's gonna cost us money. Or is our role to, for next year's budget that we're voting on to say, uh, we, again, for the reasons, <laughs> Committee, we think your budget is, um, you know, two thousand dollars over, so we're going to cut it. But then you can do what you want with your budget and pay that person, and they automatically get the benefits because that's what we do in our town for our employees. If they work more than twenty hours, we treat them that way, and we provide benefits. So that's that's awesome. all. Right. So I'll throw an answer out there just to yeah. to have a discussion about it. So I think that within our town that we have a level of trust um, among each other, that if somebody comes forward and says, I have six people working for me and two of them are benefited and that's what I wanna do next year. And these are the hours that we're not gonna play games and then 
right? Like Candace would never do that, right? But any, I think any of our department heads would not willfully do that. I think it's the finance committee's responsibility to, to think about the, to, to make sure that the town is responsibly thinking about these things when we plan the budget for next year. And if there's a situation where we think, a dis I'm not saying this decision is irresponsible, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going there, but I'm just saying if there is a decision that we think is irresponsible, it is our requirement to say so and vote accordingly. Um, so, they, oh, sorry. Yeah. Go for it, Trevor. So you recommend a budget um, and it's it's up to the, people at town meeting to decide yeah. it's, a, it's a select exactly board, yeah. instead of uh, the select board sets a budget right and then and then and then the finance yeah, committee we says we recommend this or we recommend a lower amount and when it gets to town meeting floor library proponents others in town select board may say look we really and this has happened before we really feel like this is this is important to do finance committee says we think um we should be a little more frugal here or we don't care how you run it but we just think this is the amount of money that we recommend, and then it's up to the the people. Right. Mark, go ahead. So, is is this committee tasked with, or have we in the past considered the cascading effects of you know having benefited positions? Because no. even though I, I disagree on some of your points, I, I actually do agree with you. Like, if that's not our duty, then I'm I'm actually inclined to 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 stop meddling, as you put it. But if it is our responsibility to meddle, then you know I I, I want to make sure we're considering it. We have not in the past. I am hopeful that when we have this tool next year, that that will be part of the discussion. Um, and maybe this year isn't the, the year to do it since we don't have that that tool in hand um, yet. One, one other yeah. thing I'll just add, in this case, it's a little different because you have a trustees that kind of run this department versus so much like this. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a different entity altogether. And the trustees yeah. decide what is needed, present the budget kind of thing. So, yeah. right. Yeah. Carolyn and then Tim. So um, in the past, um, the finance committee has been wicked micromanaging. Um, I remember in my early days, um, the they wanted to know how many bullets the police um, spent when they were doing their firearms training. It was pretty intense. I have to say it is a pleasure to work with the current um, finance committee because that doesn't happen. Um, um, regarding sh insurance, we have always um, tried to keep an, uh, an eye on, on increasing positions from part-time to full-time. The elementary school in years past would put people on for 20 hours and we had all these benefits that we were paying. And, you know, it's not bad. Uh, the Hampshire Trust does a wonderful job where we get our insurance. Um, in general, they're reasonable, but we had a whole period of time, Brenda will remember, or, or we had Janet actually, I guess at that time, but it was nine, 10, 12% increases in health insurance. It goes in cycles. Um, it, we have to think about move it when we go from part-time to full-time, that is a serious consideration. So I, I'm, I'm just saying that that is, um, a twenty thousand dollar expense potentially that Tim, you're by insurance. Tim, um, well, this has been an interesting discussion, and I think it's good that we're having it. And I want to thank the finance committee because one thing I was just thinking, um, uh, Dave brought up a good point about you know how it might be a sixty forty split in. Uh, employees who do take benefits and employees who don't. But one thing that might be helpful for us or a metric that maybe going forward we'll be able to provide is, what if everyone had a life event and suddenly 100% of the people were taking benefits? You know, that would give us, you know, some number that, wow, this could really put us at risk. Um, not that it would ever happen, but it's a piece of information that informs budget decisions. 
So um, anyway, I think you guys ask a lot of good questions and um, but I also respect you know, the trustees are doing their due diligence and asking for what they're asking for. So anyway, um, as a first first term, first year select board member, it's been an experience and an enlightenment to, to see how this process works. I have one last thing to say about, oh, about the same thing though. Like it's just a still a continuation. Like so I think you're asking a question because we're not, I don't, I don't look at what we're doing is rec like recommending whether this person should be full time or part time. Like that. I have no idea. But but when um, a department brings the budget, we have the, the binder with all of the other pieces of information in it. So the benefits and things like that. <laughs> that part of it we're looking at too. So that's that's what I feel like we're doing. It's like looking at a bigger picture to recommend or not recommend, not to say that it, it like I, I was gonna say the same thing. I think it can still happen. Even if we voted to not recommend it at town meeting, it could still get approved. Yeah. But it would just say like the finance committee. Unless the select board voted it before you do it. Okay, well, I'm just saying, yeah. So, the, so there, it has in the past been a case where the town was like, yeah, even though the finance committee had recommended sure. it against yeah. it. That's all. But... Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, um, I, I guess as a as a philosophical addendum, the, the town assembled at town meeting can't ask all these questions. The meeting would go on for like a year. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's essentially we're their delegates, if you think about it, to ask these kind of meddlesome questions. So that then when they get something put in front of them, they they don't feel like they're being sandbagged or or you know ambushed. And you know, there it, it, we see this almost every year that there's nevertheless people who feel like they weren't consulted. Why are we being asked to do this? You know, and you know, at least we can say, well, we looked at it, you know. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we actually do not have a motion of any type in front of us. Would anybody like to make a motion regarding the library budget? So um, I guess what would be the motion to, you know, walk back the, what we were looking to, would it be a motion to? Well, we decided it was what, 2000, Four hundred and sixty-nine dollar increase to take um, this position to add two hours a week. That's one hundred and four times twenty-three dollars and seventy-four cents, which is two hours a week for fifty-two weeks times the um, hourly wage of this person. And what was that dollar increase again? Two thousand four hundred sixty-nine. Okay. So you would subtract that off of two ten oh sixty eight. Which makes it hard two oh seven like that. So try We're not voting anything unless somebody makes a motion and then it gets seconded. Right. So you need I'll at least two people on the. So I guess just for the purposes of having the discussion, I I, I would vote to recommend that we reduce the Tilton Library budget, which is uh, account number 610-5400 to $207,000 uh, or 207599 dollars We have a second. second. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded to recommend this budget at 207.599. Any other discussion? Um, only that if I knew that we were going to be voting on such small amounts of dollars, there's a lot of other budgets that we went through that we could have taken quite a bit more money out of. But I'll leave it at that. I actually am, do not think I'm going to vote in favor of this. Um, what does that mean? Is that a vote? Is I'm a vote? I'm going to I'm going to vote no on the motion when it comes up when we vote. So 
So again, I made the motion just to throw it yeah, out and get yeah. it on the table. But Please. yeah, I mean, I, I do think that this is kind of a, a smaller line item to um, uh, meddle in. Um, but uh, I, I I don't know. I, I, I somewhat question the, the timing of this. You know, like this would be something where when we've got the new building, perhaps. But when you we're, when we're brought... When, when we're going to be closed, and the building's going to be closed anyway for half the year or so. Yeah, and then, like I said, we're we're robbing these accounts all over the place, um, and I, you know, I, I think that um, I, I still don't know which way I'm going to go yet. But you know, I, I I I really like am not comfortable with any kind of increases right now in a year where we're robbing every account we can. So yeah, not this is this is not my vote at all. I'm just going to say that you know, two hundred ten thousand for all they do for the years pretty reasonable, you know, considering everything they supply for the town and do for the town. Um, but I, I get it. Every, every budget's tight. Uh, difficult. Can I ask that question? Why, why this year when um, this might have been like a more natural thing to ask for as the new library opened? Are you asking me? Yeah, sorry. I think, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's something that we've needed for, for a while. And so um, I just, you know, we're noticing the pain of, of not having this person available, this position available as much as we need. So it's not um, a new need. It's, a, it's been a need um, that we've needed and I didn't have the room in my budget to, unless I went over a certain percentage in years past. And I did this year because I was able to, someone did retire and I was able to spread their, their eight hours amongst um, other staff so we could increase, you know, hours. And I just felt like it was it was the right time that I did have room without going beyond 3.5% increase to um, finally get these two hours that we've been needing for a while. But they're only there 21 out of the 30 hours that the library is open. Yeah, that's because we have day and evening shifts and we have Saturday shifts. So they're there every day um, until the evening shift starts. Um, I'm just going to clobber the horse one more time um, that the library is actually saving us money because the entire budget in the town of Deerfield is going up 5.2%. And the library is only going up that's, three. That's, <laughs> not, man, that's just dumb idea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just like, but, all right. I moved Any increase question. over two and a half question. We have a motion to move the question. Do we have a second? Second that. All right, we are voting on whether to move the question. So if we vote yes on this, we have to vote. All those, okay, everybody says move the question. Um, all those in favor of um, the Tilton Library budget being recommended at 207599. All those in favor? <laughs> all opposed. Abstaining, that does not pass. I All oppose right. my own motion, Candace, and I'm not going to count your bullets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think it was a bigger discussion. No, ever. it's a discussion we <laughs> need. It is point. a bigger discussion than the library. It's a discussion we need to have. I don't feel like we have the tools in hand to have a solid, and I think maybe next year we will. Um, you're my me. favorite uh, yeah no you're not going to put it together we've requested I, yes. less. they're going to help yes. us with this so um yeah. but i i feel like that will be very useful in years going forward and um i well I'm, my favorite position of board is also <laughs> not going there um thank you very much candace for yeah. joining us and nancy um, you're welcome to stick around the rest of our discussions if you want to. But or go and enjoy this <laughs> beautiful afternoon. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. So next on the agenda is the um, budget overview document. Um, there's a, did you get, there's a Rev A. Yes. Does it I say Rev it A at the bottom? Good. Um, so here's... Are you going to tell us what the change was? Yeah, did I, I have a hand to do one? You did, but I'm just. There's uh, another one. Oh, you want me to tell you what the I'm change is? I'm just wondering. Is? Okay, so. I didn't see any. 
Period. Right. Um, so what, here's where we are, right? The budget this year has gone up so much that we have no free cash available, essentially. No free cash that we're comfortable spending on capital. Last year, we spent $229,000 on capital out of the um, tax levy and free cash between the two. Um, so if you look at the amount, if you look at the difference between the increase in revenues and the increase in the recurring expenses of the budget, it's not 229, it's something under that 63. So it's it's a little over a hundred thousand. But the reason I gotta figure out how to explain this articulately so that I'm, I'm not fumbling like this when I try to explain it again. So the reason it's it's really a two hundred thousand dollar impact, not a one hundred thousand dollar impact, is because we went back in the fall and we added one hundred and three thousand dollars of recurring expenses to the budget out of free cash this year's free cash, right? So it's really a two hundred thousand dollar impact. Mm -hmm. So I took a stab at explaining that by the numbers in here were the FY23 numbers were what we voted in April, not including that extra 103,000, right? Mm -hmm. I talked with Brenda this afternoon. We decided that was too confusing. So what this Rev A does is put that 103,000 back in. So you'll see that the, on page three, oh, I lost my page number. Wait, that, where am I supposed to on table two. I don't think yeah. that Able to just the revenue. Right. Yeah, I emailed something out. Oh, yeah, earlier, I got right. If that's on my phone. So, um, so that you can see the increase on this rev A total is seven hundred ninety-eight thousand three fifteen. The one I emailed out earlier today was like a hundred nine or something. I mean, nine hundred, nine hundred and something. Yeah, thousand. Right. So that's the difference between the other one and this one. So what I did, I add, I just added one sentence someplace. Oh, bottom of page two, revenue and expense summary. So it says, I actually just added two words, recurring expenses increased by 798,000 plus 103,000 added at fall special town meeting while revenues only increased 683. So that, that's the difference between what I sent out before and what this says. Okay. You're with me? With you, yeah. <laughs> okay. And so this document something that is going to go is in, in the, in the whatever. It'll be in the warrant. Kind of yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. exactly. Well, this so, number was, I'm not yeah. sorry. I'm all sorry, but this number here was 900. It was nine. You see that? It was 9016. Yep. Okay. Was, that's including, that wasn't, or that wasn't, that wasn't included. Right. So the reason the, the FY24 number stayed the same yeah. between this afternoon and this evening. I, but the FY23 number increased. I put that 103,000 back in because it had been voted in the fall. Right. And that's like all the numbers in our book include that 103,000. Right. Okay. So I decided that was a more straightforward way. So the question for the group, I think, is are we okay? Like, I am very hesitant about this. Are we okay with recommending to the town? that we put ourselves in this position. Um, so this is an interesting question. So apart from you're saying voting for all of these budgets that we voted for, right? you're saying now, is there potential that we debate the question of whether we should say no to it all? Or, or, or you're just saying no I think if we so I think we have the philosophical discussion are we comfortable with this and I, I guess the the alternative to that I, I'm 
we are way later than I wish we were having this discussion because we yeah. got started a little late and everything took forever. Um, so I think if we decide that we are not comfortable with this, then we go back, we come up with a dollar value that we ask the select board to look at the, the budget and see if they're willing to cut it. And we need to think about what those implications would be. Um, so it, it's not really, um, so I guess when I think about it, I think about, okay, if we put ourselves into the situation, so we're pretty much hard driving towards a prop two and a half override next year, unless Treehouse makes us a billion dollars in the interim or something, right? Um, and and then am I okay with that or not? And then if I'm not okay with that, then what does that mean? Where would it come from? And I'm just thinking. So it would be probably, I'm, I'm, I'm making this up, not doing the planner, going back to just having planning services that, that would, we could probably get 50,000 out of that, going to the schools, asking them to um, not reduce any more personnel, but cut into that school choice bucket a little bit more. Um, look at the, see if there's any budgets that we feel like, if, if you look at this last page, like I think that's where, I think that's where we would be going after it. Do we really want to increase? We have had, we have several positions that we are increasing compared to last year. So I think that's where any funding that we would be looking for um, would be coming from. Well, or, or you're saying the funding would be things like choice and the other yeah, stuff there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, that number here though, um, the, the most compelling picture I think that you paint for me about the starkness that we face, let's see if I can phrase it as well as <laughs> you did, but I think I got it very clearly when you put it out there is that we have this budget now, and we know that this budget that we have is going to go forward, and it provides for all of the town's wants and needs, well, a lot of wants and needs for this next year. But in doing so, um, we have basically made it so that there is no room in the budget for capital improvements, which every year in the past, there's, well, I don't know about every year, I shouldn't say every, but or always, but in most years, I think the way you're I'm picturing this is that there's usually a line item there with I don't know 200 or 300 or some yeah, yeah. some probably under five but more than two probably should be that, five should, well should be if we we're investing right but the, yeah. that goes to capital projects right and that so that's what looks that puts it into context for me on the other hand in your overall discussion that you're doing now it sounds and I've heard it before that. The one side is we're, we're now putting into place things that we think the town really needs. And if so, we may need to, to fund that and do a prop two and a half. And I would argue that this conversation now, two weeks ahead of town meeting, is probably not appropriate. Uh, not, not, not it's appropriate to bring it up, sorry, but the, the, the idea that we're going to now, in other words, Knowing that was coming, we sh we should have been. If we wanted to take that position, we should have taken a much harder look from the get go. I think on everybody's budgets, if we had that, that kind of a goal in mind, does that make sense? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree that we're late. Yeah, to, and to this whole year we have been late. But yeah. the the way I like to approach it is to go through all the budgets as they're presented so that we understand everything that's being requested before we start asking to cut anything. And then once we have the whole package together, then step back and say, are we okay with this whole package? And if not, what should we do about it? Go ahead, Jim. I'm just gonna say that given the inflation rate, I think a prop two and a half override vote even is inevitable in the next couple of I years. I do too. I do it's, too. It's just mathematics. It's not yep. go ahead. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. And then also, you know, I, I think that in addition to the inflation that we saw, we probably had about 10, maybe 20 years worth of uh, either, you know deferred capital expenditures or we um had uh 
you know, not hired people that we probably should have had, you know, for, for the last several years. So um, there's two things that I see when, when I look at this. The first is it's very obvious. Again, it's kind of a math thing. We're marching right to a two and a half, uh, prop two and a half override next year, um, which would also give us an opportunity to potentially fix a couple of things. Like I, I really hope that if we do discuss a prop two and a half override, we don't have people popping out of the bushes asking us to start printing money for them. But um, that's the first thing. And then um, the, the second thing that I see when I look at this budget is I would not want to ask for a prop two and a half override if we weren't spending down our other accounts, which is what we're doing. So it's scary, but I think it's appropriate that we're doing it because it, it, I think the optics of this would look far worse if we had, you know, a whole bunch of money and stabilization funds all over the place and, and said that, you know, we needed to do a prop two and a half override. So um, I think we're doing the best we can with the outside factors that, you know, we couldn't control either because of inflation or be, because of, you know, how the town managed things before we got here. Great. Anybody else on finance? I think I yeah, I, yeah, she's going to do finance first. I actually first. want finance committee yep. to discuss. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. committee to have this discussion. And um, I was just, Julie, I just wanted to weigh in and support of how you are approaching this and how you are doing this, looking at the whole budget. And then, I mean, I feel bad that, you know, literally we're running out of time, but I I am very supportive we'll of out. what you've been doing. Beth, do you have any thoughts? Do you have any? Yeah. No. About whether we should be re-looking at the budget now or no, no, no. About whether whether we are comfortable recommending oh, I didn't know what your question where we are. I mean, we're, nobody's comfortable with it, but whether, like, are we good with this? No. Okay. Well, I was going to say you're when, I mean, this, when this goes out to the town, it's going to explain, you know, where yeah. we're going yeah. with the yeah. probably next year. Um, yeah. I don't have that statement. Do I have this? No, I do. I say, okay, although there's no request this year, there it. I think it's pretty evident. Yeah. I mean, of course, it's interesting because we are spending a ton on capital projects, which, of course, from other funds. So it's from funds. But but, um, but, uh, but I think yeah. it's a good thing. It's a great point that you're making. I, mean, I think for some reason something clicked with me when I read that that we're missing a whole category that we're not funding, which has to get funded. Is, there's going to be no other. Yeah. yeah. Can I just follow on or just uh, something Mark said, and another thing just about going forward is that I hope, and I know I totally trust everybody else on this committee, except for myself, but it's really important, I think, that we try to go forward together with an institutional memory of things that we're thinking about this year and remember them next year, right? It's, you know, so we don't forget them. And we really come back and call people on stuff. So, you know, obviously I will spend every last time we have on the schools if I could, but I wanna make sure that what that school choice account is, in fact, trending the way they said it's trending, because if it's mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. there's no reason to save that kind of money and not spend it on our town or our kids, right? Right. So, um, but and just other things that we've talked about that maybe we need to look at, every budget that's increasing and has increased over time at a rate that's out of proportion to other town budgets, we should really drill down on early in the process, yeah. I think. Um, and then the other discussion just about efficiencies in town, and, and this is more philosophical, I apologize, but, but you know, it's a we, have, philosophical we have all these, we have these small towns everywhere, right? And, and it's, you know, we, we try to run them as best we can, but we're, you know, we're on committees here, but we all have our other careers. But, you know, is the town being run, being managed uh, and as efficiently as it could be? And I guess what I mean by that is, I don't know, like what's who, what's the oversight? Like who manages who and who makes sure that, you know, everybody is doing, and I'm not saying people aren't at all. I'm just saying it's, you know, it's, we don't understand it's, it's just process. this interesting, we don't understand the process, but also it's just the way we manage our small towns. You know, mm -hmm. we have three wonderful select people, right? I'm pretty sure all of you have other other jobs or, or you did, and you know, maybe this is your full-time job now, but it's not like mm -hmm. you went to school to be, a, you know what I mean? Like a town, Administrator. You know, yeah. administrator. 
So I just think those questions to me just come up a little bit too. Like, you know, do we, we're hiring all these great people, but are we also checking in every year to, you know, to, are we doing employee reviews like any business should be doing of all the employees? Is every department head, you know, have um, those kind of reviews going? Maybe they do, and I'm just asking silly questions, but, you know, and I'm, you know, I don't review staff. I should at my firm, so I'm at fault too, but I'm not spending taxpayer dollars. You know what I mean? And it's a different, it's a different bird. So. Well, I've done programs. Um, Carolyn and then Trevor. I was just going to say, oh, the select board does manage the town budget. And that's why sometimes uh, in the past, we have, you know, gone to town meeting and asked town meeting to recommend budgets that were different from what the finance committee recommended. Um, we try the best we can. Uh, that's why we, as a select board, are very nervous. There just is no fat and no fluff in any budget now. Everybody is down to the bare bones. So do we do um, personnel review? We do a sort of department level review. And when we do contract renewals and um, we do have like John Pachorek has a very set system of reviews for his department. We encourage that in all departments. Um, we work really hard to try to manage as best we can. Thanks, Trevor and then Tim. I think we're here, um, a couple, couple things. So I think we're here because, you know, in this budget, I, I believe in the budget that we've all done together. I'm grateful that we've done this stuff together. Um, I think we're here, you know, because we've, you know, for the last several years, we've fought hard for Chris Nolan in there now before Jennifer and, and raising that amount of money being spent to make sure that Casey has backup staff to do this and working on all the other departments to make sure that they have this. So, so we have, to Julie's point, we've we've really grown our personnel in my five years, seven years or so doing this. And it's because I, you know, I've been fighting some of them, you know, not as much as others, but there are a few areas. It's our core staff really. And this town does run extremely efficiently, um, but we, but not as efficient as we could have because we didn't have the staff. And I think, you know, getting that planner in place where it's going to, it's a hard hit. It's a big amount of money, but that's why I think we're running up to our, you know, to our prop two and a half, we have plenty of room in our ceiling to kind of to 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 do a reset after twenty something years and go. Okay, we've added these personnel. We've kind of got budgets pretty tight everywhere. We think this is the direction we're going. We support doing this, and we we support having some money for capital to set aside instead of just hoping and wishing on free cash that we're going to be able to support. You know, these pieces of equipment are so much more expensive than they were 20 years ago or 10 years ago. So that's that's a bit of a struggle. And every two weeks I sign every warrant. So I go through every single line item and I look at what we're spending on everything. And I come in and I talk to Brenda and say, well, what are we doing here? Is this is this right? Is this not right? This seems out of the norm. What is this bill? You know, I look at every single line item and sign off every every two weeks. So we we try to be really efficient, but you're right. I have a 60 hour job also. So we do need to have that core support to make sure we're running and we need to do a better job of doing um, reviews of people. We just, we run out of time and, and so much other stuff going on, but it's not fair to the employees and we need to take some time to work on that. Tim? Yeah, I basically just want to reinforce that I think your analysis is correct that the town is has been for a long time headed for uh, an override. And um, in the last three years, you know, inflation is cumulatively about 22%. And we've got 2.5 to work with. Exactly. Hiring a planner, grant writer, administrator is not the reason why the budget's out of whack. The budget, it's not even the administrative staff, it's the reality of numbers. Um, and you know uh, the necessity to pay people a wage that's going to attract them to stay in a job, even if it's lower, uh, and than than they might make in in a private industry. Um, so, um, I, I heard Mark mention something which I don't I don't think will be a problem, but 
um, if we don't if we don't um, buy a freightliner truck this year and we wait until next year, we we have a whole year to prepare. What is a logical and you know justifiable prop to override to bring to the people? Um, and and I I wouldn't definitely not support backing out of the plan or just just me personally because it's been necessary for a long time and I like to think of it more as an economic development person um, so maybe we bring in federal dollars maybe we bring in state dollars because we have somebody who's dedicated to that function and it also lifts a burden off uh, Casey and Chris the one thing I will say after almost a year in the select board is that things take a lot longer than I'd like to see them take because we don't have the people to do the jobs and focus on specific issues and bring them to you know fruition. So um, <clears throat> I do thank you guys for you know spending all the time and energy you do on this, and uh, I think you you do a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I and that's it, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so I feel like I'm not hearing anybody saying that we should do anything different than what we're doing. I, you know, I spent an afternoon looking through the binder looking for anything that could be, and I can only find trivial nickel and dime things yeah. that not very many of them have. The departments have done a pretty good job of containing their expenses. Um, I think we need to, not now, <laughs> but next year when we go through this, I think we need to think about consistency among like how we review the different budgets and the example that comes to mind is we spent a lot of time talking about overtime at scams mm -hmm. we didn't spend any time talking about overtime in the police or overtime in the highway and those are the other two departments that have big groups of people that are in situations that require a bunch of overtime so mm -hmm. i think probably next year uh, we should spend some more time thinking about overtime. Well, and you budgets. know, as a proportion, really, most of our efforts should be spent examining the school budgets. Yep. Yeah. yeah that's that's the everything else is details. Great. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it, except, I mean, I'm, I agree with you. All budgets should be looked at, but don't forget that I think the school budgets percentage increases have been. Yeah, Frontier occasionally has had some big jumps, I think. Why? I don't know. Frontier's because of the affected way they, a lot by the number of students. Right. And, and so if you look at like their, their underlying budget, okay. yeah. the number of students yeah. as compared to the whole. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. But I yeah. guess I guess what I mean is run, runaway like increases. I don't. I, I, by the way, I agree. You, yes, we should look at everything. Okay. So I'm not going to get into One last quick now. thing. I just would love um, before, like, I know we'll do town meeting and we'll move on and stuff, but. If we are thinking of a two and a half, I'd really like to dig down, you know, with your team to figure out what is it truly like rolling in scams, making sure we have capital. Oh, I have definite opinions on uh, all that. Yeah, all that stuff. I just love to think, okay, so if we are going to ask for one, what is it going to be and, and, and think long term for it? Because you're never going to ask for one in our careers again. So like, how do we figure this out and make sure it's accurate to support it? Uh, truly needed all that stuff yeah. i'd love to have that conversation Good. but not tonight not tonight <laughs> <laughs> Just we've been on the couch we ever had it done a prop two and a half override we have not we have not ever no. okay um, no we've right there. we've been one yeah. of the lucky communities that hasn't yeah. had to yet all right okay. so we're gonna go through this a little bit or was i supposed to send you uh, comments earlier i love this by the way so here's yeah here's what we have left to do tonight we have to do this and we have to look at the warrant articles. Yeah. Um, so we could, we're, you know, we're into this. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. And then okay. did we get a hard copy of the warrant article. Uh, I have one and I can make copies of I it. I can make it. Anybody copy. needs one. I would rather have a, a hard Any copy. Any chance you could share it on the screen? Same. How many people need? Probably everybody. Oh, uh, I've got one for, so I don't need one. Four. Raise your hand if you want one. Okay. I like the um, so you want to shoot you want me to share what we're actually talking about <laughs> yeah that's that that would be nice 
I can probably handle that. Yeah, all right, Rebe. <clears throat> So what this is, is the description of, okay. um, so this is the summary that the finance committee puts together that goes into the handout at town meeting that describes the budget. So it's an overview. So the beginning, the first section is just like, this is where we are. And then we talk about funding sources and what's happened to revenues with like a little plot of that. And then we talk about recurring expenses. That's the way I titled it. So it's the omnibus budget plus the items, the Warren article items that really we see every year, like Smith Vogue and Scouts and that kind of stuff. And then a summary of that. And it has, um, and then at the end, there's highlights about changes from last year. So there's a section on school costs because there's, we spend a lot on schools. There's non-personnel expenses and then personnel expenses. And then there's a summary of, uh, I'm just I'm just scrolling through it so you see what's there, not expecting you to be able to read any of this. And then we'll go through it um, piece by piece. But um, like position by position, personnel wise, what what the impact is. So, anybody have comments or? Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Do we know if the Tritown Beach Environmental Permitting is of uh, ongoing? It would be a recurring cost, or was it that for one time? So the um, there is one cost that is just a one time. And then the control of the vegetation is going to be ongoing. So the cost. Like that initial permit thing. The environmental permitting is a one-time cost and Waitley has agreed to pay 50% of that particular cost. So it's a $6,000 cost. We're paying 3,000 of it. Then there's the vegetation treatment that they're estimating to be $4,000 per year. So, sorry, kind of 30 dash 5410. Yeah. So, you might want to break those apart then. The one time. And she has noted that on her uh, report on this. Mm. Not clear. You did. Um, under, on, on um, the second to the last page. Yeah. Uh, it says Tritown Beach expenses partially due to increased wages and hours, but a large part is environmental permitting and trimming due to be vegetation. Right. Right. 10000 is the total. Deerfield is going to pay 6000 But right. it's not it's... separating the yearly and the one time. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, I see. Thank you. I don't know that that's important. I think that's getting into the weeds for people. Uh, yeah. I see what you did there. So, I, I, I mean, I, <laughs> what's that? I said, I see what you that did there. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't even know she did it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, actually, actually, though, I do think people will care because you know, I do too. We between we had to spend this extra money this year, and are we going to spend $13,000 on track on beach every year? I don't even swim there. You know? It is what I uh, see. An, a line item that does cause, you know, okay. hands. Uh, I see. It is, okay. Is the 10,000 the one time permitting and trimming? No, 6,000. 6, so that's Deerfield's set portion. No, 6,000 no. of the 10,000 is one time. 4,000 of the 10,000 so is the, recurring. Permitting so 3,000 of Deerfield's okay. portion, 3,000 is one time and 3,000 is recurring. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You could maybe just do something like that. I don't know, six Deerfield plays. Or maybe say, you know, future, future, and it'll uh, be in the future, yeah. 6,000 will come out of that, but, you know, other costs are going to go up. So I'm still going to do uh, because this is too big. Well, the thing is 13 that 13.8 is Deerfield's share. Huh? Yeah, but the one thing, the one thing there's Wheatley and, and Deerfield are splitting evenly. Yeah. yeah versus how they normally don't split. 
they agree to take up because you know one is getting into it. Thirteen eight hundred two is the increase in Deerfield's contribution to Tri Town. Okay. A bunch of that we would have regardless because people get paid more every year. Yep. So, and I didn't. You're right. I didn't dig into the difference between. So the the thirteen eight hundred two is all. Is the entire increase? Yeah. Over what it normally is. So three thousand of that thirteen thousand. Yeah. So I just added three thousand of this as a one-time cost. Right. Does that yeah. make your okay? And Can I just other... do some language-ish things? Yeah. All right, just minor. Um, so just the first sentence where we use the word inflation. Yep. Um, when people think of inflation, they think of, you know, inflation of, you know, food and heat and expenses. Mm -hmm. But um, do we also, we want to, I mean, this mm -hmm. separate thing is just a, is an increase in salaries. So in other words, Salaries going up isn't in really inflation. So it's just the pressure of contractual employment increases. Right? Okay. You're using it two different ways. Different you're using it in two different oh, ways. No, our our inflation in the town context is because we have contractually either have no, three year contracts and, and there's, there's a cola, cola that we've been, of it. right that we that's spent. not contractual. The no, cola is inflation. If there were no inflation, there'd be no who, cola. Who has a, we have a step increase. Is that what you're calling a cola? No. no. We no, have a step no, increase doesn't. and a cola. The cola was 3%. Personnel board recommends it. But that was just the increase for the year to the steps. No. No. So people, Maybe so, I'm not saying this right. The steps were increased by a cola. Correct. No. Well, yes. So, yeah, the There's steps, no, the steps so there is increased by 3%. Right. But <laughs> People moved up at Absolutely. least one step. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. But people's wages are where we rarely level funded. I mean, we've never kept wages like capped. They always take a step. Right. They always take a step. So all, all, I'm just Sometimes we don't do a whole lot. Um, I just thought that the, 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 the budget due to inflation, it, it the the wages have gone up just because they've gone up as they always do. It's not because of the general inflation we have out there. I mean, Correct. Like, unless you're yeah, saying because yeah. of the cost of living in, in addition to the step right. increases, right? And sometimes they don't offer the cost of living uh, adjustment, or they might offer less. Two um, or two and a half. Yeah. No, to everybody. Everybody. But it's on um, to anybody who's on the so compensation I'm, plan. The right. class comp so, plan. Not, Right, but the schools, for instance, aren't on that. Correct. Correct. That's what I'm saying. And that's neither right. is the highway, right. and right. neither right. are are the police. police. Right. That's right. There's a contractual. There is. Right. I'm not going to. Right. It's not a big deal. If you guys, I'm not making it clear, so just leave it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down just to funding sources. You, you said excess is in, uh, under funding sources, middle of the page, just below middle excess of the page. Excess funds. Excess funds not used in previous years termed free cash. Mm -hmm. And here it is, are supposed to be used primarily for capital expenditures. And my question there is, but are you saying by law we're supposed no. to do that? Or by tradition in the town we've done that? Tradition. Okay, so well, tradition, or, and, tradition in the town and by what do you call it? What necessities. What to, DLS no, it's what is, everybody does because it's what you're supposed to do. Right. What do you call right. that? Best practice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. But but not necessarily capital expenditures, but one time expenditures. One time yes. expenditures. Yeah. Buy a piece of land, okay. Like that. I just um, wondered. I mean, I'm not saying. I'm just wondering whether we need to make it clear that that's um, best practices recommended by the town, or it's traditionally what we've done, or I, DLS or I, I, DLS recommends um, any of the trainings that I go to. It all says that that's I'll right. warn against okay. using right, David, that's free right. cash that's for right. ongoing. No, but you want me to add that to this? Well, Is that what you're saying? I think that clear that the, what, that the, these are according to, is supposed to be used for capital expenses based on one best practices. Dollars. I would just based say one-time expenditures rather than capital. Yeah, one time. Suppose isn't a very firm word about. We're yeah. really trying to. 
Make this is what we get for having a lawyer. I'm sorry. Make us be proper. Our recommended best practices rec encouraged or. How about, how about should be used? Should be used primarily for one time expenditures best on based on recommended best practices. Based on municipal best practice, municipal finance, or based on? Yeah, that's great. You like this better? Okay. And then my only other little, well, two, two more things. Uh, under page three, the school costs. Mm -hmm. School Since school expenses are such a large portion of the town budget, any increase over 2.5% has a substantial negative impact on the ability of the town. To me, that's... Um, can be right. can be um, pejorative. pejorative as opposed to we all know. I mean, it, just take it out. It says it has a substantial impact on the yeah. ability, which is what we're trying to say. Okay. Or you could even say as a overwhelming. Uh, but I mean, you, I don't think saying it's negative is you could even making call it school effect. Effect. <laughs> Sorry, it's impact. Sorry, natural effect. Personally, everybody uses impact way more than they should. Yep. My only pet peeve is just, we should get rid of the negative because. Okay. Substantial it's impact. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other comments? <laughs> One last thing. This last table about personnel costs. I yeah. You love it. So I actually a, what? Oh, that's okay. I'm, Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just a little um, nervous about it in the wrong what? What? in the wrong hands, so to speak. I actually um, was thinking that we should take out that potential benefit it. liability column. I think that's something okay. we need to talk about, but right. maybe I should just take it out of there because it's opening us open up us to too, too much. Yeah. And many of these positions are very specific to an individual. Yeah. 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 Right. And, so and that's so that's why I was yeah. 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 I agree with that. Okay. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Indulging me. So what are you saying? There's I know they're specific to an individual I'll take out the whole thing. Well I'm gonna know, delete yeah. that column. Uh, the potential uh, okay, because that's giving information, personal information, obviously. It is, and it's also it's very nebulous, right? Yeah. It's it's a potential liability that half an hour talk. We just yeah. No, no, it's yeah. Fine. I'm I'm, <laughs> so, I'm clarifying whether the whole table is getting no, 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 just, just that column. Okay. So, so I think we'll still have the increase column. and the budget line item impact. Okay. Except um that's what's the, the different oh yeah, no, that's the same because yeah. there's some um, yeah. Yep. Change huh? it. I'll just so I'll have to reword the um what do you call it the caption at the top of the table yeah and, um, yeah yeah okay so in terms of the individual line items so this is public record isn't it so is there yeah, yeah. I mean well, I don't think we're getting rid of those okay cool. just, no just, all just I'm getting rid of is that potential <laughs> benefit liability yeah problem, because yeah, that, I think that, that's too nebulous yeah that I would agree with I, I just wasn't sure if we were Potentially proposing to, you know, put aggregates in here by department no, or something. No, okay. no. I think the rest of it needs to be there. Because um I, I think it does too. And you know, even if we tried to obfuscate that, um, it's public record. So yeah. And we should and I think the purpose of this document is so that people don't have to look through the whole thing and pick it out mm -hmm. themselves. We're saying, you know, we've looked at this and these are the yeah, there is on, the, on the planner yeah. economic. Development yeah. coordinator. It should be planning, economic development coordinator. Just to just to um, agree with with what's in the uh, compensation okay. plans. So planning. 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 Uh, so so a coordinator of the planning and economic development. They are not a planner and a coordinator. And then the next question is, what exactly are we uh, putting into this chart? That we're considering a personnel cost sort of increase because we're obviously, a, um, for instance, in the scams, we talk about personal cost increase, including benefits, mostly offset, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, and there's no new positions. So why are we not putting, I mean, not suggesting we did, but why, you know, school, you know, personnel cost increasing at the school department or in, like you're trying to just do additional so positions first. Two, the only, so the only two that are not. 
either additional positions or additional hours are SCEMs and police. And yeah. we can take that. I mean, I just made this up, right? So yeah, well, that's we what I'm trying to But the reason, the reason I put those two in there is that I felt like looking at their budgets, all of the other budgets, the increases are contractual or cost of living or, you know, the In class the comp plan, or they're just kind of muddling along. These are increases beyond, they're like, it, it's having, more overtime and more hours. Or whatever. So in other words, it's beyond, in other words, it's a, something additional beyond just the position the normal. from last year to right. this year. Right. Of personnel. There's either additional added. personnel or something that they're added to the added hours, added, added position. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Added. Get it. Yeah. yeah. As long as restructuring justified. So if you this forty five thousand and one dollars for the police, if you look at the police budget, wherever mm -hmm. that is, it's in two somewhere, right? It's right at the front, two ten. Right. So what this is is the increase in if you go down, there's like salary, 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 and then you get the one that says training regular. Yeah. If you start at that line from there down, it's it's the increases in those lines. Right. So it's six thousand dollars in training, four thousand dollars in special training, uh twenty something thousand in the Quinn bill. For the 40,000 at the whatever that one is, there's a hole in it, the one under overtime pay. Well, the Quinn bill is contractual. Oh, that's yeah. I was wondering. Oh, okay. So I should throw the Quinn bill out? Yeah. Yeah, because that's, that, that's, that's, that's required. That's in their contract. Okay. Yeah. But why, why is it jumping though? Is there a new, so there's a new contract in place? Take, take, so take, any increase in salaries. Yeah. Is a corresponding increase in Quinn because Quinn is either ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty, or twenty five, or twenty five percent of your pay, depending yeah. on your education level. Correct. Okay. So also, like if somebody got a master's or something, there right. that would change it as well. And, and, and so they change. just hired um, a new full time uh, policeman who is who has an education degree. And the one that left us did not. So you've got. Uh, so we had a jump so, from that. So right. John was taking that into account to make sure that we covered right. cover so that. They, so in that okay. sense, that probably should be taken out of the. That total? should be. It sounds like it because should. It's yeah. Not a decisional thing. Yeah. Right. Right. Not, right. right. It makes the police department number look a lot. It does. Yeah. 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 He did explain that when he was here. I remember the Quinville. I, I remember him talking about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Julie, the other thing yeah. is the assistant town accountant isn't really an assistant town accountant. It's an administrative assistant. Until we reevaluate a position, that position would have to be put into the schedule, the uh, class that op schedule. That was actually a question that I had too. So. Great. So all of these positions, the personnel board, there's position descriptions that match them and the personnel boards reviewed them. We have a draft stuff. position description for planning and economic development coordinator. Okay. Um, that's not final, but we wouldn't have a final job description until we were ready to do the vacancy. So I, I actually talked to the personnel board about that at their last meeting and at the hearing. So they have a grasp of what the intent is. There's grant writing elements, there's planning elements, there's mostly economic development elements, which tie directly into grant writing. So that's an intent that I've heard from both planning and from the select board. But we've looked at a draft description. You have looked yeah. at a draft, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other points or comments on this right up? You sent me some, okay, thank you. <laughs> Always appreciate those. You need okay. a period where your cursor is. <laughs> it started. Oh, here it is. After review. All right. What does intergov mean it's for people who are going to review this at town meeting? Intergovernmental, inter it's stuff like stuff, FERCOG stuff. And okay. And benefits. I thought it was mostly just the health. Um, 
Health insurance. It's no. Okay, we have not yet voted the uh, reserve fund. So let's um, do that. If we, um, I thought we did. No, we have not voted it. No, no. Nope. We decided to hold off. We discussed oh, it. Okay. They voted it. And you guys voted we it. We voted at one point, yeah. I believe. So where, where is that? Is it in? It's in 12. Yeah. Tab 12. Um, I what did we decide on last? 120,000. So my paper says 100, but we're just kind of What did we talk about? The reserve, reserve, reserve fund. Reserve fund. fund. Because that hadn't been voted yet. Right, right. And then you want to revoke the accountant salary line item too, right? Yes. Okay, great. So I thought that our budget last time came out to pretty much perfect. But I think it had the 120 in it. It did. It yes. had the 120. Yeah. yeah. Because the select board had already voted on mm -hmm. it, I think. Yeah. And there was a the so assumption that, that we were going to get yeah. both. So it, so it came out that way. And we've had some savings since the last, last like we, ten, we had nine or 10 from the police department. Yep. And we, yeah. Oh, and then we just maintained what we'd already done with STEMS last meeting. So far. Okay. Are you waiting for an answer back from them at all? I think they were going to come back. They are meeting next week, the 18th. Okay. So the you're right, we are. Unfortunately, yep. this time is our meeting next and week. And they were going to come back and say and, after a yeah. look at it what they could do or not yep. do. Okay. Okay. So it's still in Boston. Yeah. But, right. So at this point, the reserve fund is penciled in at 120. Mm -hmm. But and, the and, police. Scams thing, right? Could could, could balance each other? Yeah, <laughs> right. Exactly. And that's worst, worst case. I think yeah. cool that whatever the difference is could be put into snow and ice, or we can mm -hmm. take it out of snow and ice, or whatever. Because we are going to have to, um, at at this rate, with sixty thousand being allocated to snow and ice, we are going to have to use some appropriations to finish yeah, filling so. that hole because we will be close to $90,000 over. So we we're, don't, we don't know the exact number at this point. Um, we're, still we're waiting for one invoice from Greg's. Apparently they, they needed to adjust the invoice they sent us last week. So yeah, we spent in this morning. <clears throat> yeah, legal will we'll we'll have to be covered through, I would assume reserve fund. I thought we would have money in reserve fund to cover that. What's so we're the time finding funding sources? What's the process for pulling money out of the reserve fund? That's a request to the finance committee directly. Um, you indicate how much you need from what account. Um, in this case, it's it's reserve fund, but a basic reasoning for it. Mm -hmm. The department head submits it, and you take it up for discussion at a meeting sometime between now and July fifteenth. That's your cutoff date. Yeah, and so that so the reserve fund is controlled by the finance committee. That's mm -hmm. that's your decision, sure. and then it's it's the reports are given to the select board as a just so you know this is what was used out of the reserve fund. Mm -hmm. When it comes to appropriation transfers, that's something that the finance committee and the select board really the select Get board together. pulls it up first, and then finance committee um, basically confirms it. So how much is left in the reserve fund from this year? I think there's still 90,000, but I didn't look. And when we don't, if we don't use it, that goes, that gets rolled into free, yeah. in free cash. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But we expect that a good portion of it will get used. Yeah. I'm yes. guessing yeah. at least 40,000 uh, for sort of legal. Only. And then there's going to be some other um, small things, I'm sure. And snow and ice, if we don't have any other means to, to cover snow and ice. Um, that might have to come from reserve. How much snow and ice gets paid to private contracts? It varies. It, yeah, it really Most does vary. Um, I, I think the good portion of, of this year's budget was really for the salt. Yeah, the materials. Oh, okay. The increase in costs salt, were salt significant. Doubled, if not, so it's not almost the tripled. No, it's about the material. Right. Mostly. And then it is it is subcontractors. There are some subcontractors, but yeah. materials seem to be the highest increase that we saw. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, salt was crazy. 
Oh, so unbelievable. That's this year's work. So in terms of the question you're asking, to wait to vote on that. Yeah. We have not yet voted on an amount for that. Right. But hold on. Uh, but can we just so this would be a basis for discussion? Okay. I move that we recommend the sum of 120000 for the reserve fund. Second. Second. <laughs> Mark wins. No. Okay. I guess we're just, not, we're just love facts and figures on this. That's all. As to where the budget is that we currently voted, including the, the including the what we did with scams, including what we got back from um, the police. So the so it's at eighteen to eleven one fifty right now, based on based on uh, reducing scams by ten thousand. That might not happen. And John giving us back ten thousand out of the police budget, so eighteen to eleven. So you basically have ten thousand less than what this report is showing. That's where it's at right now. That's and, and what's the revenue? Revenue is eighteen to twenty one. If we leave a little less than one hundred and seventy five thousand, I think it's like uh, one hundred and seventy one thousand yeah. in free cash. And, and that number 18 to 11 includes 120. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I got it in my head. So we're balanced. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it includes 60,000 for the snow and ice. You can see that on there. Any further discussion? No. No. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Five zero zero. Turn to my page. I just realized Marty might not have a copy of that because I handed that out at the last meeting. I updated mine. Three. Okay. Um, the accountant, which what was the line item? That is uh, 135-5110. I did not print a new sheet. Uh, but basically, I took that assistant down from 10 hours um, a week to seven hours a week. Have a little higher pay. Is that how many hours do you total here? Five. Seven hours per week. But uh, the total hours. Per week. Oh, okay. Forget yeah. it. Forget it. Um, <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. I just want. I have fourteen thousand three three sixty. Yeah, so it would have been three hundred and sixty four hours instead okay. of instead of what was what was in there. Um, five a week or five twenty would be money. So the new number is ninety one six thirteen. Is that true? Yeah, and that's what's in our summary sheet, and that's within this eighteen whatever. So, yeah. It was just uh, Casey and I were talking it over the other day, and I I I just don't know what to expect. I need help. Right. Can I get some help from the assistant town clerk? Maybe if we have a town clerk on board and and things are working well, I, I don't know. If I don't need the person, I won't use that person. I think we should you know, but, come back in the fall and look but at it. But it'd be nice to have that at. little bit of cushion in, in case I do. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I have somebody in line that might might fill those hours if if I need somebody who's retiring. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the account and salary account number 135 5110 in the amount of $91,613. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous five zero zero. So then the only other thing that hasn't been voted is the snow and ice. And you want to just wait till we know what's going on with this um with scams. Yes. Or do you want to vote it at the sixty thousand now and have it in the end? What helps you? Doesn't matter to me that much. I mean we have we have another meeting and we voice we can always what's that you said the amount is likely to change you know, 60 is not well it's it it right now we've overspent by over eighty thousand. right so but we're going to have to make it up somewhere else all right yeah. let's not talk about it tonight let's save it for yeah. the next meeting and go on um so that's all the budget line items except for skims is still somewhat questionable and so nice okay yeah. let's do warrant for a little bit. No. Um, the only other thing too, Julie, is um, maybe a final decision on capital, but I would assume you want to do that next week. Yeah, do you want to give us an update on where we are with 
the discussions for capital because I went back and looked in the um it's ARPA. Yeah. Well, there's there's maybe maybe yes. the board has yeah. not made a decision. Yeah. The board has a hearing on Friday yep. where they will discuss capital because the bylaw requires it. Um they have not had that conversation in substance to take specific votes. We've suggested the use of ARPA funds, but there's no guarantee until the hearing opens and the board makes a decision. That's not um, how play out. Do we want to post that as a finance committee meeting in case anybody from finance wants to come? Don't have time. It had to have been posted yeah. before four o'clock. Come and speak as a person from the residence. Right. You can <laughs> certainly come as a resident. Yeah, please, please come. Yeah, that's right. Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Right. Yeah. Can't take I a think vote. So Can't let's a just clock. clarify this. We could, even if we were all there, yeah. we can go, we can speak as in residents as long as we don't deliberate. You right. can't deliberate. Right. It, it's a touchy, it, it, it's a touchy situation because in some towns it's been problematic. I would say err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. Um physically don't sit with each other if you're gonna come. Yeah. But certainly as a resident, and I think if it were me. I would say as a resident, not a member of the finance committee, this is my thought, right. prefacing any comment you have okay. to be clear. Um, yeah. But yes, I mean, as a resident, you have every right to say something. Right. And if it's like other hearings have been, you have your two minutes to say your piece and there's not really any back yeah. and forth anyway. So. Right. What's the echo debate that we're having here? We're just, we're gonna talk about capital. And yeah. since we don't have um, free cash, some of it's gonna be, possibly used by um, capital stabilization and a large portion possibly from ARPA. Potentially. Right? Potentially. And there's, these are like and loaders. Those drops. are not the chalk that um, Mark or somebody yep. That's right. walked us through. That's right. That, yes. that, that just needs to be discussed and voted on. Right. It has to be formalized because okay. we have to develop the motion that yes. shows yes. what's yes. going to be purchased yes. and how, how, okay. how we're going to yeah. fund it. And a, and a decision needs to be made on how we're going to approach the um, ambulance. The ambulance. Right. Um, I, because I think we've been told by the two other towns that they're probably going to vote it. So if that's the case, then what do we do to yeah, make that work? Do we fund that? Have to, they have to, if they're going to fund it, we have to fund it, right? Correct. Well, so um, I think that, uh, are so, we talking about this now? So oh, well, sure. I would You're love to see. This is not a slam on public works by any means, but I would really like to see an independent group of people who have experience in this area look at that big plan that they put together. Mm -hmm. And just like anything that we have that we're spending, mm -hmm. if you add all that up together, that's a lot of money. Anything, any item that's that big, we have sort of an independent look at and we have people in town who have experience with mm -hmm. construction equipment and yep. you know there's people who work at all state there's people who work at cocot there's you know people who know this stuff and it would i would think it would be useful to have a yep. one-time look at the plan and have them go inspect the equipment and just give us a, a that that gives you know it, it gives back up to kevin too i mean and it's, it's um, yeah oversight. it's been years since they've kind of developed that too so they're probably would be some changes that they may want to look at it as well. Yeah, it's a good idea. I think up until now, most of the things that capital has recommended for the highway department though, has been equipment that has safety issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not really proactively rotating things out like we do with the ambulance and the fire department. It's like this wood chipper has 40 year old safety features, you know, like it's, yeah. it's kind of, or the, in the case of, um the sander body like this thing rattles around when we don't have a bunch of salt in it um so for for me you know um it's been fairly easy to make those assessments because they're kind of like not dire requests but close to it but you're right you know going forward it might not be a bad idea once we get back on track with some of their spending um so we don't get caught into a position where like you know Capital does. I mean, I used to do concrete construction, but that was a long time ago. You know, I'm not an expert on heavy equipment anymore. So, you know, Kevin Kevin had four items on his list, and the fourth item, as he as he in the rated them, 
is that pickup truck. Maybe if we forego something, maybe it's the pickup truck this year. And, you know, with the idea that it would be replaced next year, it's just a, just a thought um, that I've had um, rolling around in my mind. All right, so we'll wait to hear back from. So now, can we talk about Warren? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let's actually start at the, the, so the one we have is the one you sent us. The one I sent you last week. Or something. I yeah. do have corrections from council, but I was out of the office for two days for a seminar in Boston. So tomorrow, we actually have a team meeting tomorrow morning to go over where we are in the process of uh, finalization of the warrant for posting and what articles may or may not be um, the boards indicated there are a couple of articles that they may pass over. So that notation will probably be in the guide. Um, and the board, actually, Chris and I have a question for the board when you guys are done. But um, essentially, this is the draft of the warrant. Um, as you can see, we've combined a couple of spots into consent articles. Um, and when you, as you go through, if you wouldn't mind, Julie, I'll give you the update on what I think um, could be some changes in that. And, and okay. not substantially changing the warrant per se, but what you might see in terms of motions or not, or passovers. And I, I hope we can put some of the numbers in here. I'm, I'll be working yes. on that heavily tomorrow. Right. So we'll be working so, on that part. Okay. So we have another meeting next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I think, and then at that point, we'll have the latest version of the, the latest version will get posted. Um, the numbers we have to finish because we have to post for Friday, right? Um, to meet the requirements in the bylaw. Yep. What we had, there are times where we don't put numbers in. What we've tried to do is as things have progressed with you all and with the board, we put the numbers that we were firm about. Um, but we also add tables that for the acknowledgement of gifts and such. So that's what she's going to be doing tomorrow. But if there isn't a number, here's what we normally do. Um, we post a meeting for finance committee right before town meeting. Yeah. If there's anything you guys have to address. Similarly, we do that with the select board. There have been times we've done it with capital as well. Um, so if there is something you need to take a vote on that might mitigate what the initial motion in the guide looks like, we give you guys that opportunity. So next Thursday, are we doing that? Yes. Pre-meeting meeting? Um, Trevor's not able to come, so. I have the first um, I have the first Yeah. Yeah. I don't so know it's in so he was actually wondering if we could do it on Wednesday. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if you if you needed it. I think we picked Thursday for a reason. We picked okay. Thursday because you already had a meeting on Wednesday, and we didn't want to spend too much time sort of intersecting with regular business mm -hmm. we could change it if we had to but okay. i would it's okay. i would streamline that entire agenda if we were going to do it because there's going to be questions yeah, so there's significant guys. changes in this budget i don't we initially do talked about the 20th because that was a set aside date where we could just focus on the warrant and the budget okay it's up to you guys yeah you tell us so if we um Skems is meeting while we're meeting, and I don't think we'll know by the end of our meeting, although we seem to meet forever, um, what what their final resolution is. So I'm wondering if we should have yet another meeting on Wednesday, possibly remote only because select board will be meeting. And the only topic would be the result of the scams, what we do with snow and ice as a result of that. And anything else? Is there anything else we would have to discuss at that point? It would be on the 19th. Yeah. No, I can't. Any anything capital else would they sure. have to review? Would they need well, to capital, review? Well, capital, hopefully we could talk well, about on Capital, we could talk on the 18th. presented their budget. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Is it Wednesday only? Wednesday. In Let me see what we've got on the calendar. So we're already on for Tuesday. Oh, yes. We're already on for Tuesday. 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 Yeah, it's a No, because we moved it because of the holiday. Monday. Monday's the oh, holiday. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Back from the mayor. Okay. 
Can I can I just ask um, Casey to verify what the warrant article is on Sunderland's uh, town meeting warrant and Waitley's town meeting warrant regarding the ambulance? It's not clear to me if there actually is on their uh, warrant if there is a warrant article to to fund that. Do you know I for can sure? Check tomorrow. Okay. I, I, I did not think that there was um, consensus on that, but I, I may be wrong. Yeah. Okay. Well, there so isn't obviously, a that will impact us for sure. So if you could figure that out before Friday, Casey. Mm -hmm. So does 530 high, um, remote only work on Wednesday and hopefully it'll be like 20 minutes. Ooh. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Can you promise? Can that can that be a joint one? Can we repost the selectmen's meeting for that to be with you too? Sure. Or do you want us to vote to do it? Just no, you don't want us to do it at the beginning of selectmen. Well, no, one. just if we just if we have um, any just you know, because we can't discuss it either unless it's posted. So. Your your select board is posted for six p.m. Yeah. So we can right. Start a just joint post it for the joint one at five. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to do that? Six. All right. Okay. Well, is that for the pre town meeting? So what time are we doing? Five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. On Wednesday. The nineteenth. The nineteenth. Okay. Okay. Let's start at the end of the warrant and work forward. So Article 19 is the accessory apartments, and you were on that committee, Jim. Do you want to say anything? Um, yeah, it, it, the idea was they defined a fairly limited size um, allowable accessory dwelling to go on an existing dwelling property. I think it's specifically dwellings. And the idea was this is to allow, um, basically to allow either older residents who are rattling around in a big empty house to uh, you know, subdivide it or have family or you know, break it up into separate units for them and for their family members or potentially a caretaker. Or, you know, on the other side to allow families with a big old house that's, you know, got built in the 19th century with servants' quarters to rent out some rooms to, say, UMass people, grad students. Or, um, and so there's fairly, they, they, I don't remember the exact figure, but it was something on the order of a thousand square feet. 900. 900 okay. square feet max, you know, size limit, or at one point it was either that or a specific fraction of the main dwelling, but I think they just said. No, it's a square foot. Yeah. Um, I personally think any size would be fine. Um, but, um, you know, the, the idea is basically to, to allow, I mean, it's not even, I, you know, the term increasing density was used, but we're not really even increasing density. It's more like we're restoring it. You know, those were dwellings which were inhabited by, you know, half a dozen or a dozen people when they were built. So, Although it could be um, separate. Well, that's what I was wondering. Is it separate or? It depends. Or there's it there's be. accessory apartments and there's also the ADUs. So I you see. can actually increase square footage. As long as you meet the setback requirements and all the other stuff, you actually can add to the structure. You can, you can okay. Build a house and okay. I wasn't sure. As long as it's not bigger than 900 square feet. Right. right. Yeah, so that's, that's the, the only limiting factor. Yeah. Like the Dukes of Milan that have a palace for your, yeah. a miniature palace for your dwarfs. Is it limited to campus. one accessory unit per single family? I think it is. It is, yeah. Yep. And it does not include things like porches and un other unfinished space. Yeah. I. Um, also, it has to comply to the, um, you know, the septic system has to be. Oh, that's a good point too, yeah. Yep. It, yep. Has to be applicable to how, you're adding another bedroom. So if it's rated for two bedrooms, you've got to have a three bedroom septic system upgrade. Um, I don't really think there's any financial implications really for this. I, I would just like to make a motion to recommend article 19 is written. 
We have a second. Second. Great. Any discussion? I, I actually so. I totally support this and I think it's great as written. I think it's well done. Um, I don't agree that there's no financial implication. I think it is um, uh, an economic benefit to the town. I oh, think okay. It, um, yeah, I guess in the end, uh, yeah. It, it makes, I, I think it's good economically for the town. Yeah. That was very inarticulate. <laughs> I'm just curious. It, um, I'm totally, and it's true, but it, it, it helps because the property value is going to go up and need more money or just we're going to have more people? I think it helps the finances of people in town it, it allows you to rent out an apartment in your house which increases the I mean it, it's good financially for people it allows um it, it could allow people there's I, I'm not an expert in this but I've heard discussion about things like um what do you call it when but you mean the older gym. people are in a house that's too big for them, and so there's not overhoused. I think overhoused. Overhouse. People um, are overhoused, so it, it helps with that. It you know might increase the might bring some more people down. I guess somebody could have, but um, more kids in the house. Okay, so I agree with that. I'm just curious when you um, when you say financial impact of the town, you just mean that it's it has a whole bunch of good reasons for the town, but as you're not saying it's somehow going to bring in more money. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, you would have the, that's actually not true. You would have a, an assessment. Say you added on a two hundred thousand dollar increase, um, you know, addition, then your house would be assessed for additional two hundred thousand, whatever it is. So property value. If, if, yes. if you're Slightly doing increase. additional work and to add right. Down. When yeah. you pull a building permit, the builder tells you how much the value is or the cost of that. And then it's added into your tax bill the next year. And then it would be reassessed by Patriot and they would do the real estate invest. Um, so you'd have the building increase and then you'd have the real estate increase ultimately in a couple within a couple of years. That triennial review that we- That works. We're good. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Any other discussion? We're gonna vote on. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other discussion? No, all those in favor? That's unanimous, five zero zero. Um, let's go until no later than eight. So we'll just do as much as we can by then. Article 18, I'll treat Saturdays as legal holidays. Do you want me to answer some of that? I talked to Brenda today. She said you had a question on it. Oh, about my questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the idea is that um, this really has to do with um, early voting. And I think it's only, I, is it the selectmen or, or yes, the clerk? Yeah. The selectmen could specify a couple of weekends and not like the whole right. year kind of thing. Right. So, so this, when you, so my question is when you designate, so early voting is going to start on Saturday and you're going to have to bring people in to, to do it. And you don't want to do that. So you designate a holiday. So you don't have to do it. Yeah. If you designated that a holiday, then the people who do have to work that, do you get double time instead of time and a half if you're working on a holiday? It depends on who's working. If you have a staff member, that's a full-time person, then you have to allocate for that. But you're not talking, um, no, you're like talking like EMS or a police, police officer, police officer right? right? You do that day. Exactly. And it's a holiday all of a sudden. Think that yes. The Depending on the legal get holiday time? in the contract. They're defined, there's legal holiday definitions in the police contract. But that wouldn't be. But you're not going to have, a, but but generally. That isn't listed as a holiday though, right? They have specific holidays listed. They have specific right. holidays listed and they're treated and this in would specific dip ways. Back so okay. this would not be a holiday in that contract because it's not listed as a holiday. Right. And the other thing is, is typically what you're really talking about is election workers. So people that help people register to vote. Mm -hmm. um, it sometimes to mitigate some of those costs, um, Barbara, our former town clerk, would work that herself, depending on how she had to develop the schedule. So the, the bigger implication here is the change to the voting or the voting act change forces, unless you accept this portion of the general right. laws, it forces you to treat holidays, treat Saturdays as holidays and put that into a schedule of early voting. 
Um, what clerks do as a course of action now is they have to designate when they're going to be open those additional hours to allow people access to register to vote. This would allow us to take Saturday off the table, but make adjustments in the rest of the schedule. So opening late certain days, because you have to publish that with the Secretary of State's office. This is me having observed what happened last year when the real implications of the change to the act came on board. Confused. So on early voting, we have to let people vote on Saturdays? Register. Right now, Register. yes. So depending on when the schedule for voting happens, and that's based on the election itself. Doesn't this also affect registration if if we're, you know, you count open. 10 or 20 days prior right. and, you, right. and you have to be open to register. If you so count that as a holiday, then you don't have to be open that day. You'd correct. be open a different day. Correct. So I'm confused. So you were, we're trying to be able to designate it a holiday so that we don't have to right the early Saturday. voting on Saturdays. Right. 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 But but not so, all of them because they're they, no. they they made it oh. huge. So you, you can select um just based on how many people are coming in and over you can you can adjust your times that you're going to be open to a normal you know extended time but not the whole time because otherwise you're you're paying somebody to be here eight hours a day and nobody shows up for a designated holiday to avoid people voting on that day, then why are we worried about no, registering, holiday? registering. So register. So here's what I was just asking the question. So if you have it on the Saturday, then the people who register have to come in and work that day. Right. So you have to pay them overtime right. for working on a Saturday. Potential. Right. So if you de designate it as a holiday, right. then they don't come in and you don't have to pay them overtime. My question was other people who have to work that day, do they get, are they going to get holiday pay? And the answer was no. That it's not, it's per their contract and they don't. Not for the, not for the police. Why, we need, why, are we, why are we trying to designate it a holiday? It sounds Because otherwise you, you must be open and you must work it. It sounds like they expand you the choose. number of days okay. that the, include Saturdays. The only way that you can yes. get out of it okay. is, is kind of designating them as holidays. Yep. So nobody's getting paid extra on that holiday because we're not doing it. Correct. Right. Right. Okay, Correct. It. it allows us to be closed. Right. Yep. Jim, go ahead. All right. Um, this is a Massachusetts general law. Do we actually have the option of not accepting? Yes. Yes. So it's yeah. an opt-in It is law? Essentially, yeah. by accepting the general law, you're opting into this ability to, to structure your, your voter registration. Yeah. It's already structured, and yeah. I am by no means an expert. But my basic understanding is when the election is called, um, the Secretary of State's office communicates to the town clerks and says, okay, when are you going to be open for voter registration in addition to your regular hours? So on a Saturday, it can get expensive if you if you have to have people come in to open the office, and sometimes you only yeah. see one person. Yeah. So it, but it does. You do have the ability to to change your hours in the rest of the week, so that you can accommodate that voter reg that additional access to voter registration. All right. Uh, question. Go ahead. So, what about EMS? Do is that would if we declared an emergency, do we pay EMS overtime? Casey and I were just talking about that, and uh, the bylaw indicates which holidays are holidays. Mm -hmm. It's not going to include right. this, so they would not get okay. paid holiday. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. So, um, I think you partially answered the question, Casey. I was just curious, like, if we've got any data on the volume of like registrations we do. Uh, the The only concern I have with this is people who, you know, may be of certain communities who may not be able to afford to take time off nine to five, who may need to necessarily rely on Saturday registration. We'll what kind of impact are we we'll going to have on those people? We'll um, I think it depends on when you schedule the outside of normal work hours time during the week. Um, and that's, so to your point, there is an argument to be made for either, for either side of this issue. Um, but one thing that the clerks tend to take into account is the fact that a lot of people have a schedule of say, you know, eight to three, nine to seven, whatever that schedule is, they try to accommodate by adding hours towards the end of the day. Um, and, you know, there could be a request where we don't have the board 
designate a Saturday right. or illegal public day if the town clerk feels strongly about that. Like that's going to be a recommendation that comes from the anybody. And if they, if sometimes people need a sat like we have been open on Saturday we before, and we probably still will a few. But how many that they required in the law was just large for small communities like this. So it gives us a little bit of flexibility. Is it, the concern I have is like we're already closed. What is it, Fridays? Mm -hmm. And if some if someone were to work like four tens or have like a schedule like some of our scams folks, you know, they could necessarily never be able to come in if we do this, no. in, unless we designate Saturdays um, as not being holidays from time right. to time, right? There, there would be some a Saturday. whole bunch of yeah. Would there would, would there be, be still yeah. still some? Okay, yeah. Correct. All right. It's not just saying like no, we're not doing any Saturdays. It just gives us that flexibility to be able to adjust how we need. <clears throat> Go ahead. Jim. Okay. No, no, no. Sorry. I Thank you. Have something, but I. So, what do we need to we do? We need a, a motion, meeting. even though it's going to be revised. No, with the schedule. It's going to be revised. Well, well, it says this question may need some wordsmithing. Yeah. Uh, the explanation. Oh, so, I don't know. The explanation will go into the guide. Um, as this stands. I have not gotten to article 18 in town council's comments. So if there are changes, I'll pass them. I'll get them out to you. Um, but it's fairly straightforward. Usually I would take something like this, the explanation piece and move it in to a readable document like the guide. I The only time I don't do that is when the school committee sends me a request. I usually put their explanations in. So we can vote this? And, yes. Yeah, okay. Fundamentally, the request doesn't change. Okay. Do we accept the general law, the section of the general law to allow some flexibility with Saturdays or don't is really the question. What's our motion? To adopt it. Motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt it to approve. Recommend. 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 Article 18. Second. Any discussion? Sort of had it already. We did kind of have it. Um, does anybody see any financial implications of this? Yeah, that's the whole point of it, right? <laughs> Bene benefit and oh, done. Over yeah. yeah. All right. I <laughs> rescind the question. Maybe we should finish now. All right. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Five zero zero. Um. We should take Article 16 and then 17. Yeah. Is this going to change the article? I can't say. I can't say that no wordsmithing has happened. Mm -hmm. um, but my my comment is, I received an email from the moderator questioning this. Okay. Um, and why the moderator was not included in the conversation. And so this came forward okay. as a request. The board added it to the warrant. Um, I'm hoping I'll be able to push out corrections because we're doing our recommendation notes right now um, by Friday at the latest. So it gives you some time to review. But fundamentally, what was submitted for 16 and 17 are requests to make changes to town meeting and in 17 to set an annual special town meeting in the fall, since that seems to be the, the process that Deerfield has adopted for many years to hold a fall town meeting. Um, so I just wanted to put that comment out there before. Has the select board reviewed these? Yeah. They have. Mm -hmm. they um, again, I the explanation pieces of these two articles are included here, but will we be removed for the final version? I don't think we, we haven't posted. voted them yet. Yeah, right. we, voted. we haven't voted. We were just kind of hoping to talk with everybody on how does it look? Does this make sense? Right. Okay. Here does the moderator, do you the think moderator. the moderator is okay with it? Uh, right. My sense is no. <laughs> okay. I think it might just be a little more, you know, if included, maybe we talk it through a little bit, maybe it gets bypassed till the fall or something like that. But right. um, okay. the yeah. moderator is a little upset about this. Well, the mod, it's his meeting. It so he seems. should, really be involved with all decisions about annual town meeting, a special town meeting. It's and not our meeting. Right. So it, once the meeting is open, 
the moderator runs the meeting. Yeah. The yeah. warrant is job. called by the select. Board. Yeah, right. So there's always kind of this tension back and forth about like what we're doing and when, because he's usually not involved in meetings yeah. until we get like close closer to, to the town, closer to the yeah. town meeting. So I think it caught him off guard. Um, but the reasoning to make these or to consider these changes is really in front of us because we had a change in the executive branch. It slowed down the budgeting process on their end, which also slowed down the House, the Senate, and every town and city in the Commonwealth. So this, and this isn't unusual. Every once in a while, Deerfield makes a change to when it does a town meeting. Um, it's the ramifications in the moderator's defense, the ramifications of how he does his work mm -hmm. are also a part of this. Yep. So it makes sense for those comments from the moderator to be taken seriously. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it could be a situation where it's a consideration. It could get passed over. It could get shot down. Right. It could be an opportunity to educate people as to why we consider making this type of change. So yep. who's talking to the moderator about this? Casey. Casey is. Okay. I'll call you if I need uh, help. <laughs> do you... Um, do you think you will have had that discussion with him before? By next Tuesday? Yes. Next Tuesday. Tuesday. All right. So let's not talk about this now. Yeah. Okay. 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 So now we have five minutes left. Well, well do we want to just wrap up? It is a request to pass over. So. Well, you could easily recommend 13. Why does the meeting have to be fixed? Why are, why, are, why are we changing it? Why is there a why consideration? Why change it every year? I mean, roughly oh, we're going to have it in a People want to anticipate, you know, every year kind of when the meeting is right. usual this is the radical change right because it's usually in april no, it is indeed. usually in april and so the consider yeah, by law until the third saturday in May. Mm -hmm. yeah so the consideration here is to allow more time to right. develop the budget because in most towns i've seen it in deerfield i've seen it in ashfield i have colleagues that see it in their towns um there's usually a crunch particularly with the school budgets, because statu statutorily, they come in later than some of the other budgets that you see. And so putting the puzzle together can take a lot of work. And you guys are experiencing this right now. Um, so, so that consideration in terms of the request was to give a little more yeah. time. I'm not arguing either way. I just, there's got to be some kind of Murphy's Law about this, though, that, you know, whatever yeah. the deadline is. Sure, it's going to be you're going to miss that one too. To run up to it. So <laughs> yeah. it doesn't really matter unless, true. unless it was a real fundamental reason. It's usually it's budgetary and it does affect us being in a region too, a regional school system with yeah, Frontier right. because all the other towns have yeah. their meetings different times. And, uh, th that was one of the other reasons someone brought up that the other town meetings were later. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember oh, right. why that had to do with that. Well, the, it's, it's, it's here it's has to publish or vote their budget at least 45 days before the first yeah, town yeah, meeting. Was was right. We were the yeah. first. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. that was a tight turnaround from when they got their information. Yes. Exactly. It was very yeah. yeah, tight. Yeah. 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 That's all I'm going to say. I think it's a moving target until the cherry sheet comes out, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this is like a very real problem. It is well, a very the, real The cherry problem. sheet doesn't come out in time. You still have to yeah, vote your budget without it. Right. Yeah. So in terms of what we had for information to start with, um, really there was a lot of concern communicated to me that the school in terms of time frame, was gonna have a tough time. Mm -hmm. And then it trickles into the rest of the budget debate process. So it's, it isn't unusual, David, to move something like this. Um, I think, there was some thought put into how to structure the change in town meeting because it would allow some a time frame where you could get more residents there well, but also within the, the the period that the other four towns are making their own decisions a lot of the discussion also came from you know parents um you know not having you know just looking for a saturday if, because they're busy, the kids have this going on, and they're trying to do homework and tr trying to get, you know, be more accessible to working families. Oh, yeah. um, oh, so right. I think no that was one of the Saturday. discussions for a Saturday thing. Yeah, for people who don't like to drive in the dark. That's yeah. true. Yeah, seniors who do not like driving at seven. That's and nine. been a routine complaint yeah. for many years. Yeah. What's the usual um, festivities in town? Not this weekend, actually. Uh, 
in in May. You know, the, the elementary school fair. fair. The fun fair you know, is like usually in May. Yeah. There's tons of baseball games too. And there's also yeah. tons of baseball Yeah. No, and, and team pictures and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. The, in the old, my old, one hesitation is that if we put it too late, kids get out of school, families leave on vacation, and they're not yeah. here to vote. You know, even anybody at you know at the other end of town too, they're they're gone. You know, or sabbatical whatever it might be so so that few it's weeks, a balance it is, and that few weeks that you that you consider making that change also doesn't fall within that space you know most kids i don't know about deerfield academy and the nonprofits, but and the other schools but we can expect the public schools to get out somewhere between the what 15th and the 23rd mm -hmm. of, of June of June yeah um and we wouldn't we wouldn't be the last town meeting uh Conway's is the last town meeting I believe yeah. um but they did the same thing several years ago they made exactly this change because they were having a structural issue in debating their budget and being prepared um but they also shifted their election so it, it's a consideration we don't know what the legislative body will do um but certainly the explanation for this and, and how the, the date you get to the dates makes a lot of sense. And there's also a consideration in Article 17 that if there is no business to be done in the fall, you, bypass. you can bypass it. I do like the so third Saturday. The question is, is there any financial effects from it? Pain and suffering. Yeah, pain and suffering. Yeah, pain pain and suffering. suffering. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Cost us more or less? I, I think it depends on how we have to. If you're thinking about it from my perspective, which is the administrative perspective, it could be the cost of having staff at the meeting. Okay. Uh, so we have to pay overtime to do that. You, it can it possibly? It depends on how the clerk and the assistant clerk structure their staff. Um, but also anecdotally, this concern about people being able to get to town meeting, having enough time to debate mm -hmm. the articles presented to them. Uh, I'll be honest with you, when I worked in Ashfield, we had a Saturday town meeting, and it functionally was created healthy debate and interest, and it was well attended. So there is that thought. I, but I was just asking whether it's, this actually is our roommate at all. Well, it it could have a financial effect. It okay. it could. Um, I think the department has tried their best to mitigate costs, and we do make some adjustments in people's schedules and stuff. But this is a big change from what Deerfield has done in the past. We we have budgeted for fiscal twenty four for a very small amount of overtime hours in some of those budgets for that very reason, that and for the elections. And if Article 18 passes, or what, yeah. I suppose you could vote yourselves a Saturday holiday. <laughs> <laughs> for purposes of administration. This is I feel like we should overtime? probably wait to vote yeah. this until after the discussion I can have a bankrupt the town okay and it's eight o'clock so um we got two articles now yep yeah um all right motion to adjourn second we have all those favor we're done all right eight oh one the select board still has some business to attend to correct yes on. Yes, I am still here. You don't need to. I don't have an agenda really in front of me. Um, it's going to make a copy of this case. Do you want to? Do you want to share an agenda, Chris? Because I don't think I have one up. I'm sure. Or Sorry, I'll do that right now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I know there's. Yeah, but we filed them. Did we? I thought we had a motion that she's not allowed to leave. She's not there yet. I read her every day. Well, then we had to vote the election yeah. workers. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. We had to appoint appoint the election workers. I think. Yeah. Yeah.
Can everybody see my screen? Let me uh, grab yes. that. Thing. All right. Cheers. I have four kids. Oh, my youngest is 13. Oh. I mean, she's a seven. He's the second oldest. Yeah. I texted the kid and I had them bring me food and drink. <coughs> I usually have to uh, appoint the names. Do you, uh, so I think the first article of business, um, other than yeah, signing right. the town warrant, um, yeah. would be uh, we, the select board of the town of Deerfield, by virtue of the authority vested in us by the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby appoint the following poll workers for the term beginning March 23rd, 2023, and ending December. 31st, 2023. Um, Ray Bernisky, John Carney, Maureen Casey, Byron Coley, Lily Dwight, Tara Ike Richardson, uh, David Gilbert Keith, Barbara Huntington, uh, J Hunting, uh, Jameson Eisler, Christina uh, Kopp, Margaret Costa, Judith Cundell, Olivia Leone, Sophia Leone, uh, Natalie McCormick, John McKenzie, Maura uh, McGargy, Margaret Narowitz, Albert uh, Olmstead, Sharon Pachurik, Mark Pachet, Deborah Pryor, Gail Robinson, Dave Robinson, Kathy, Kathleen St Steer, uh, Stanley Stokarski, Kathleen Watroba, and Jane Risley. Can I have a second? I will second, second that. Thank you. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S, aye. Thank you. I've signed here. It's in the signing uh, thing for you all to sign. And I think, Carolyn, you've also signed the uh, licensing uh, authority certification yes. for Treehouse. And I think yes. Tim Tim will come down when he can and, and sign those. Um, thank you all. Yes, thank you. And I think this is already signed by all of us here. So that's done. Robert, can I ask Casey um, if I said that you could use my stamp on those two documents? Is that acceptable? Yeah, yes, it is. Yes. Yep. If that's your instruction, that's what we'll do, Tim. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. That makes things easier. Great. Um, you can use my stamp because I I have four meetings tomorrow. I'm going to be hard pressed to get down the town meeting. Uh, okay. I mean, down the town hall tomorrow. Yeah. But okay. I could. I, I could do it on Friday if, we, if you want to wait till Friday. Other yeah, uh, election one? yeah, we can use the stamp for the election so. one. You've signed all the other ones already. Maybe yeah, we'll I came down today. Yep. Okay, good. Perfect. So just, the um, the signing of the annual town meeting warrant, we couldn't actually remember if the board had made a motion back in March to approve the signing of the warrant contingent on any of the last minute wordsmithing from legal counsel um but if that hasn't been done we definitely could benefit from it being done tonight if that's at all possible if anybody remembers so um, my suggestion would be in case we because chris was looking this up as i was leaving boston yeah um my suggestion would be to have the board approve the warrant as to form okay um pending last minute changes from yep. town council yep. there is one article that's been in discussion and it's the um india house article carolyn mm -hmm. that's right. been in discussion between pbma's council and lisa mead our town council that's the one that i think might have the biggest change yeah um but okay. so i was wondering if the board would be willing to do that and i would need at least two of you to sign by friday so we could get this posted so i can sign tonight. I could come back Friday. I'm going to go to Vermont tomorrow overnight. Okay. So I could either tonight or I could sign on my way back Friday. Unless the, if you were in. Although if Carolyn, and we can bring the warrant, we can bring that to you if you need us to. Okay. That might be. We just need to warrant. Right. Okay. That sounds good. So, um, I'll, I mean, I can, if somebody brings it outside, I'll just sign it outside if, if that's a. Yeah. yeah. We, we can could do, do that. that. We could do that, Tim, for sure. Sure. So thank um, you all for your flexibility with that. Sure. So um, should, we should make a motion then, right? A motion to approve uh, signing of the warrant as to form for annual town meeting. 
pending councils. pending council's review and changes. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Governor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, so, are, so Friday, signing Friday is okay? Is that what we're leaving it at? So we need to get it posted Friday because Monday is a holiday and the assistant clerk and I are trying to be careful to make sure that everything is ready for people to see as oh, of okay. Monday. Yeah. Um, because we have a seven day requirement in the bylaw. Oh, so we're just okay. being careful. And I'll be back midday on Friday so I could sign it then. Okay. Yeah. And we I could just, sign it yes. uh, for a meeting. Our meeting's at four o'clock. I could come in around three o'clock. Is that okay? If you can get, if you could sign it by two thirty, we can make sure that the constables have it's been right. in, sent to the constables to be posted. Okay, uh, I will. I'll make a note that I got to be in by two thirty. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, and um, contrary to what you see on the agenda, I actually had one more thing I wanted to ask. If that's okay. Um, so the change order for DPC's latest. Uh, basically DPC's latest change order, change order number 10, was something that got sent to us. Um, I had initially said that that was going to happen on Friday, and my own mistake that I'll completely own up to is I forgot to post an agenda for 4 p.m. Friday, so while we're still able to hold the capital hearing, yep. Um, yep. there is not going to be able to be discussion on other items like the change order. Okay. Um, I did send it all to you um, earlier in this meeting, I don't know if you feel comfortable approving it tonight or if you'd rather wait until oh, next week. Let's wait till next week. Cause I know okay. that, that Brenda, I, I spoke with, um, DPC, Justin, um, Scully, uh, this week with Brenda and, um, he's going to be providing us a new, uh, updated, um, cash flow so that we can just make sure that we're in good shape before we, because we want to just understand what we're going to need to spend uh, based on our borrowing that if okay. we don't spend any money until after the year. So that'll give us a little bit of time. We've already, I did um, notify them that they could go forward based on our last meeting with just the, the drawings for the rebar. Um, so they were going to move ahead with that. Again, it was like under $2,000 for that work, but um, so that's that they got that process going and then let's just wait until like next week to have a meeting and vote on change order 10 if we can okay is that okay with both of you yeah i agree oh, yeah. no that's fine that's fine thank you and i apologize for the error on my part no no worries, no worries at all. Oh, listen, don't worry about it um There's so a lot more disasters to think about <laughs> there's a more. lot there'll be more don't worry <laughs> i take so some I comfort in that i don't know how much <laughs> Don't look up. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to let everybody know that we will probably be posting the agenda for the select board and now adding this element of discussion with finance committee at 530 for next Wednesday okay. because Monday's a holiday and yep. I don't want to lose track of this on Friday because right. Friday is going to be busy. Yep. Um, and Chris is going to be out of the office. So it's right. going to be me and Pat. Okay. Um, so what we'll do is we will pull together what we can pull together. Chris, we're going to need to check and make sure we don't have any appointments or appearances. Um, I don't yeah. think we do, but don't quote me. Um, we have to go back and look at our schedules, but we're really going to be hauling butt doing the, um, doing the warrant, starting the motions and making sure that we have things posted for next week because it's going to be a little tight we need to just in case have you guys posted for tuesday wednesday and possibly thursday when we do the information session in case you do have to make any decisions pro forma um but by next week we'll also be considering the postings for annual town meeting as well okay okay any um oh let's see there was mentioned oh um I'm drawing a blank at the moment here it was something oh so uh, where are we at with the pre town meeting um so that was, was one that, of the things that Julie was yeah. working on her report is going to be something of a framework right we also have to go through each of the articles and so are Brendan, you still planning to do it the twentieth 
Yes. That's fine. I'm just, I, I just won't be here, but I just want, and that's totally fine. I just well, want to double check. Chris, that's did okay. I miss that? Did they want to change it to 530 on the, on the 19th? I hadn't heard anything about a change okay. in time. Two articles, right? Those two I think. scams in the other squish yeah. snow and ice on, on that, that Wednesday. So that's Let fine. So let's keep Julie. it at the 20th. It's fine. I don't okay. need to be I'll there. check with Julie just to make sure, because at if all. we can go through that in 30 minutes to 45 minutes, it's, and we don't, knock on wood, have a long warrant. Right. Um, it's just the real nuts and bolts are the budgets. They are. Capital, omnibus that. budget. Yeah. This consideration of a change for town meeting. Um, I do. Keep it 20th then, that's fine. I don't, I don't need But to. if Julie wants us yeah. to change that, well, then what to. we do is we streamline the agenda yeah. for Wednesday. Just focus on that. And focus on this. And get it out to the public. Okay. Oh, Tim, go ahead. Question. Um, the planning board um, has been instructed by town council's office that they need to approve the Leary lot survey plan, and they were suggesting a possible 15 minute zoom meeting on the 20th, okay. that would be planning board select board to approve the plan so that we could move ahead with getting it recorded at the courthouse and then have a closing. So just I, I was not aware about this meeting on the 20th that you've already talked about. What what exactly is that? Oh, so usually, Tim, every, every year we do a pre-town meeting where because right. sometimes we really anticipate a ton of questions and all that. We don't really have to this year, but if people want to, I the mean, it's always going to be tight enough. I think it it's makes important sense. to kind of just. Yeah, yeah. But what time? Ahead of time and just ask their questions before town meeting so they feel comfortable. What time does that? Is it scheduled? I thought it was at six o'clock, but let me check. Uh, I think I had it. I had it in my calendar for the twentieth at um, at five p.m., but that was just a placeholder. And then um, again, so I it hasn't know. been posted yet. Right? I had it. No, yeah, no, because I had six p.m. I had six p.m. Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I've I've got a meeting at five thirty that I won't, so I won't be here. But everybody else can. Oh come. no, maybe that's why we changed. Well, I didn't change it. Okay. You got FERCOG, Trevor? I do. I have a council meeting, our our uh, our yearly or quarterly council meeting up there. Yeah. Um, I I don't think it's going to be huge if Trevor's not here. Oh, I don't either. I think you're fine. I don't I don't need to be here. Much of what we get explained are going to be similar talking points as to what you'll see in the guide. Yeah, and what I, don't, I actually don't see us doing anything. The only thing that I can see us talking about is the planning position. Yeah. That's so, a big question. And budgets. Yep. Yeah, but in general, we've worked with the finance committee and the finance takes the lead on this. That's true. Well, so, it is budget. Um, and one thing that when Brenda and I went through this, we sat down and went through each one of those line items. And I have notes to sort of explain in case there are questions from the floor. Um, recall that last year, at annual, there were questions about the increase in Brenda's salary. So it it behooves us to be prepared, but I also wanna make sure that we streamline the information session so that it is easily digested um, prior to town meeting. The, the only thing that Trevor might wanna do is make a statement in support of the planner position. Okay. That's all, and that we could read that because I, I would foresee all three of us just making some kind of statement in support of the planning position. Okay. But otherwise, I'm, I think Julie's going to be able to do the whole thing pretty much because we're, we were in agreement. Mm -hmm. But we could talk about that, I guess, after Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Did I miss anything, Chris? Nope, he's he totally re reorganized the administrative office while you were there. <laughs> I'll fill you in tomorrow, Casey. Um, <laughs> a lot of technical difficulties, but um, not too much in the way of anything. Um, we had no or, internet. There was no internet for a while. Yes, there was no internet for a while, and then I had the same problem in Boston. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's following you. That I have not dealt with. No, that's fine. All right. Well, Entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Thank I will second that.
Carolyn, all those in favor? Mr. Melchie, aye. Mr. McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. 